palier. Oh, oh, mince. On s'est fou, il perd. What's up, fool podcast? Before we start, let me make sure there's no Pokemons to be looking for in the studio. Because <laughs> I gotta get one, man. But the, 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 the internet here sucks, so. Yeah. I, you know what? On the way over here, I saw one in the car. It was sitting on Lisa's lap. And um, <laughs> my fucking phone froze. Oh. So that, it was a rabbit. So that fool kept just, all he did was just going <laughs> over and over. <laughs> it me. was a rabbit? Yeah. Oh, I haven't seen that one it yet. It was pink. Ah, oh, we're happened. so full podcast with Felipe Esparza and back by popular demand. And we sent Rodrigo back to Zacatecas, Mexico. Yeah. We got <laughs> Dustin Ibarra. Dustin. Hey, what's up, guys? He's the human wrecking ball. I am, dude. <laughs> ah, dude. Yeah, dude, man. This fool kid. Talk about being kidnapped. Bro. I'm the human wrecking ball. We went ball. back to do the pitch meeting. The pitch meeting right up. Yeah. Yeah, we uh we went over all that yesterday. Do you want to deconstruct what happened yesterday? I don't know, bro. I don't, know if you, I don't care, man. Well, let me show you First the whole thing. This fool showed up fucked up already. Was I that fucked? Was it nah, obvious, man? Nah, nah. Because I, nah. I was wondering, dude, did Peter know like that I was fucked up, you think? Nah, nobody knew, man. Peter, okay. uh, he was too. He was on the side of you, so he didn't see in front of you. So, you, oh, God, he didn't see my crazy eyeballs and no, shit? I saw your crazy eyeballs. Okay. Plus, you were added on too much. I was what? <laughs> I know, dude. I, <laughs> once I, did you see how I tried you know, to get away from it, though? Bully, remind me of, anybody, anybody, go read a book called Permanent Midnight <sighs> by Jerry Stahl and rent the movie. It, it stars um, Ben Stiller as Jerry Stahl. And he plays a guy who was a writer for uh, Alf and um, 30 something. And you can see how this guy will come in fucking cracked out to write Alf. Yeah. I wasn't cracked out. <laughs> I was just no, really man, I'm just saying that. Yeah. What happened though? I was it. You know, Ben Glebe? He's got like a pool, and I went over there earlier. So I was day drinking. And that was. Mexican love pools are out there. <laughs> Huh? I said Mexican love pools that we don't belong to them. Oh my God! Yes, bro. That's how I know. Like, I'm like, I'm. He's dead. my best friend, bro. Here the pool. <laughs> yeah, dude. So I was hanging out over there, and then so I was drinking, and then I, I then I was like, oh crap, I got a meeting to get to. So I, then, I know you called me all late. I did, yeah. You know, you know, it's funny, man. Like when Dusty Ibarra called me. And I made that call before. I know uh, we have our guest here, Ed Edro. Yo, and, what's up? You know, man. You know, he. You know, I'm pretty sure he made that phone call too. I made that phone call. That phone call you make like 30 minutes before a movie, but you're calling in a voice that you're expecting them to say it got canceled. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to get invited to the pool. Dude, I couldn't remember if we were meeting or not. I was like, dude, is it today? Is it tomorrow? When are we meeting? And then my phone was dying, and I was all drunk. I was like, what am I doing? And so anyway, I know what you're talking about. I did add on too much, because I remember, I, like, the, my first time, I was like, I, 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 don't, I don't know if I would say it. And I was like, <laughs> listen, I know you guys are really professional. You've been doing it your whole lives. You get paid. We're going to go with you guys. Go. We're going to go your way. <laughs> yeah. It was so ridiculous. So then after that, you know, it kept going. Yeah, after that we kept going. Um, actually, during the meeting, there's always um, um, there's, there's always um, when we're there at um, at um, Bobby Bowman's house. If you're listening out there, does he have a pool? Bobby Bowman. No, oh, he doesn't have a pool. No, that's why a, we don't hang out as much. <laughs> he, has has a, a he has a dog that's blind and deaf. Damn. Yeah. yeah I'm afraid man. if I look at that dog wrong, it's just gonna die. Oh, man. <laughs> Wait, did I just see that you guys got a rabbit? Yes. Or a bunny? We do have a rabbit. If you're anybody's inquiring on my <laughs> Snapchat, Felipe Esparza and Lisa from the Ancient of the Casserole podcast, we do have a rabbit. We have a, a, we rescued that motherfucker. Really? For from where? Sixty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> no, Lisa was on Craigslist. We, we, we had another pet, Edro. We had a we had a hamster. Okay. All right, peace, Chucky. That was the first time I cried for an animal. Wow. Right? I heard you say R.I. Peace. Did, did he die in pieces? Fuck yeah, die. He died, dog. <laughs> he, show, he showed up, bro. Like, Lisa took, fell asleep with her the, with the hamster because it was already dying, though. Oh. His, her last days of chilling, you know? <laughs> she was under the blanket, and when Lisa woke up, she goes, Chucky died. Oh. Right? And I said, No! Oh, and I went to go punch the first person I saw outside. <laughs> nah, I don't want to do that. How long? How long oh, man. did Chucky last? Eight months. Oh, that's. Yeah. 
So um, just natural well, causes. When she was natural, she was there, man, laying down and looked like a fucking crack whore dead dog. Like a, oh, she was all blue and red, little fucking co- um, coke nose coming out of her little blood. Oh, poor little thing. We buried him outside, put him in a little bag. Put a little gone. cross. Little, little cross. cross. <laughs> you don't know his religion. What if he was? <laughs> <laughs> like we had fish that had died, but we never like cried. You know, okay. Yeah. But our our son, you know Isaac Hayes, Miklo, he was sad when yeah. our, fi- our our fish died. Yeah. He he put a little R I P. Made a little Aww. fucking tombstone. How long have you guys plants. had the bunny? Um. Four months. Four months. Oh wow. We had it three months. We traveled with it. To Damn, sneak into really? hotels. Oh. Yeah, I had a guinea pig one time, and my mom left it in the car, and it died. Fuck. Yeah. I. To this day, I, I'm like, Mom, why'd you do that? Are you serious? You killed my best friend. We just got a pug. A puggle. Half pug, half beagle. And, oh, uh, I bet you that's... I, just, uh, that's... I was trying to talk my boss out of it, and <laughs> fuck that, man. Who's the one that has a cleanup after this piece of shit? I'm not, a, I'm not a big fan. I'm not a big fan. <laughs> Wow, man. We went to the improv class. Huh? We went to the improv. You know what's funny? I, I normally, like, I'm out of town, you know, and I'm, I travel a lot. So, so the edge right here. Yeah. So we hardly ever go out. And when we do go out to the Laugh Factory, it's noticeable that we were out. Like, people say, oh, we saw Eddie and Russell Peters. Oh, we, we, you know, it's noticeable yeah. that you went out. So I It's went been out. a minute, man. Yeah. Like, and how often do you show up at the clubs now? Never. In LA? Never. How crazy is that? And that's where I always used to see you. That's where we always used to hang out. I used to out. go three times a show, bro. Damn. And if I did, like if the line was long, I'll just fucking leave and yeah. go to another club and then close it out at the Mexican clubs because they were yeah. dancing there. Mm. Dancing. So I go to the improv and um, Liza Schleschlinger performing. Yeah. And I walk in there with fucking long hair. It's funny, when you walk in with another long hair, <laughs> you notice there's long yeah. hair motherfuckers in the room. I know, we just look like a ruffians and just like, how are these, we came in, trouble are these guys causing? We came in, like, we were like two, like, if you don't know who we are, um, Dustin Ibarra, 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 <laughs> or like, right. by Celia, Ibarra! Whoa, that's too much. And, uh, <laughs> Did you see, bro? My maracas came out. Yeah, man. <laughs> We're noticeable, man. Two long hair guys, t- a little short Mexican fool. What's your problem? Mexican fool. Hollywood, bro. Okay. And it's difficult. They have the lab now. It, it is a little weird. Uh, the, is there the three setup. rooms or two? Two. 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 Up the upstairs, they do podcasting. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, I ran into... That's another... Last night, I ran into this fool, this comic from like way back in the day when I lived in New York, and he didn't remember me. Bald fool? Yeah, John Roy. Yeah. yeah, and I was like, hey, what's up, man? He's like, uh, what? I'm like, fool, it's Dustin, man. Come on, don't act like I've changed my look. Yeah. <laughs> you know? He was doing a podcast or something, huh? Yeah, yeah, they were doing that upstairs. I they met him one time because I had a show called Torti- Tortilla, no, Tequila Tuesdays at the Bray Improv, Damn, and wow. I booked John Roy to do it one time. And he's from Chicago, and he walked up to me a long time ago and said, um, my dad is, is, is a fan of your comedy. It's funny, a lot of these white comics, their fans, their dads are fans of my comics. Wow. Did you, so did you go up last night? Hell no, man. It was like a long ad line, open micers. Oh, really? I didn't feel it, man. Really? I didn't, I ended up not going up last night either. What happened? You passed out uh, with Jim Sullivan's room? You want to hear what happened, what man? What happened, dog? Oh, First of all, this was loud, man. <laughs> uh, man, I dropped oh. before the left up at the left factory yeah. and took off. We were still in a car, man. I said, fuck it, man. We're driving to the improv from this fool's house. Bobby Bowman, and um, I turned on my phone to look for Pokemons, and Dustin Ibarra is <laughs> yelling out the window, man. Like, no, he's really yelling out the window. Yeah. Any no, Pokemons boy. here? <laughs> and, I, and then, and, and you could tell when a motherfucker's not from LA because he's yelling out the fucking Cholos. Yeah, I'm like, you guys see any Pokemon here? Oh, we don't get along with those putos. <laughs> oh, wait, Dustin, now, now your name rings a bell. You were supposed to be on a movie set at our house, uh, I think, like two weeks ago, no? Yeah, and I had to do that. Was for the uh, that was that day we were doing the uh, three arts thing. All oh, right, that's right. Yeah. I remember uh, Joey, the director, was like, "Man, he was he canceled on me last minute." You know what's funny? Joey Medina. I can, yeah. I can, bro, I'll show you the shooting schedule. Yeah. I was not supposed to work until later that day, and okay. I was like, "Okay, so in the evening I'll just pop by." Yeah. And I I let him know. And he was like, hey, I need you there like super early tomorrow. And I'm like, whoa, hold up, yeah. man. I got this meeting at Three Arts I got to go to. And he's like, oh, 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 man, you're really, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, bro, you really like yeah. don't arrange my whole operation. I'm like, bro, I mean, come on. I looked at the shooting schedule. 
And he was like telling me, he's like, bro, you got to be professional about these things. I'm yeah. like, well, the shooting schedule, that's what I yeah. go by, bro. It's like. Yeah, I mean, if he told you last minute to show up in the morning, then yeah. I can understand that. Dude, yeah, but, man. And he, oh, that's Joy Medina, right? Yeah, Joy Medina. He's shooting his pilot. Uh, yeah, it, I mean, I was impressed with the setup. You know, he even had catering and everything. So <laughs> there's 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 a um a part of the the pilot that um uh, we read, uh -huh. and it's kind of like it's good, it's funny, it's really funny, but it's it's edgy. Yeah, and it's hardcore when he brought nice. it when uh, when um when um when um I think uh, when Joy Medina brought his mom to Russell Peters' house. Yeah, that's a crazy yeah. ass scene. It is, and, and in the uh, bag. Yep. Yeah. So funny. so yeah. you know Russell Russell was in a couple scenes so. I think it looks, scene, it looks good. It looks good for a comedian who does who like who, who like at, at like a Joy Medina level, my level to yeah. see like another comedian who's successful. It's hard to watch, but it's good, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and then you bring your mom around, right? Yeah, that's the best your, description. First of all, why would you bring your mom around? Mom, look, this is success. <laughs> no shit. Ah, and this right here is, is right, me. Yeah. And over here is Dustin. <laughs> Getting fucked up. <laughs> Oh yeah, so anyway. That's in my pilot movie. Yeah, dude, I went to the factory and like um Steve is there, big ass Steve. Well, yeah, 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 it's been a long time. Good yeah. to see you, man. It's changed here, man. Wait, when's the last time you went to the factory? Did you go last night. Bob Hope show. Did, oh, so you didn't go last night to the laugh factory? Yeah, I did. Oh yeah? He's nice. dropped me off though. You didn't Chris Newberg had just gotten off the stage, nice. killing it. Dope. So oh. you made your rounds last night. I made my rounds, bro. I went to everywhere except the comedy store. Damn, that's so my next move. That so what's up tonight? Move. Let's go. Uh, Let's go tonight. What happened, bro? Uh, yeah. Details. Okay, so I go in. Here's where it gets a little bit blurry. <laughs> this is where I was definitely the most fucked up of the evening. Was it the Laugh Factory night? I just remember when, when, when I was choking you with a velvet rope. I don't even remember that. That sounds <laughs> hilarious, bro. That sounds great. <laughs> I, 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 dude, I don't I'm even about to remember spit on that, my water, bro. What the fuck? Wait, I do not remember fucked that. up off of what? You, you, you choked me with a velvet rope, <laughs> like it's a gag or for real? <laughs> okay. Well, you get fucked up on liquor, beer, what? Everything. Yeah. Um, nice. so I was there, and um, okay, so, Steve, another like dude's always been like ridiculously nice to me, so cool, man. Um, Ico was like, hey, uh, Ico, who? Not Ico, or no, uh, uh, someone else was like, hey, MJ, um, you're not going out on the show tonight, and I'm what? like, I'm like. Oh, uh, 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 Were you scheduled? Yeah, yeah, I was. Scheduled. What happened with Shoto Felipe as part yeah. of the like, comedy club? <laughs> fucking loaded, eh? Did Dan yeah. Cook show up or what? No, I just was like, <laughs> I was, she's like, you're not going up, and I'm like, so uh, <laughs> pull me outside. And we have a big. I go pull me outside. We're talking for like a long time, and she's like, listen, Dustin, I'm sorry, you're you're a great guy. We we love you. You just know you're a little fucked up <gasps> right now, and I'm like. Man, I should be up there on stage oh, chilling shit. right now. Instead of killing in the audience. Yeah, oh. now I'm, I'm getting all emotional. And then so, <laughs> so Steve is like, hey, man. That never happened to me. Yeah, he's like, dude, uh, don't, man, we all love you, man. Just, uh, you oh. know, we don't want you to get banned. Like, Come on, man. And I'm like, whatever, man. So I'm like, so we end up walking down. I, I believe it. Okay. Was, so it wasn't a scheduling conflict. It's because you were fucked yeah, up. Yeah, man. He was so, fucking loaded. His phone was at 11. He was fucked up at 9. Yeah. Oh, way Damn. before that. So uh, we go. We, so then we walk to the comedy store. The walk sobered me up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I'm like. That's how Mexican comics um, network, by the way. Getting fucked up with other people. <laughs> 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 and um, so I go to the comedy store. And over there. You go to the right. comedy store after all? Yep. Shit. Fuck, so I should have stood there. My buddy Jordan's over there, and like, we ended up hanging out, and like, like Hannibal Burris showed up, man. And here's how I knew I was pretty fucked up, because we we're talking and stuff, and he was like, Dustin, man, you're like, you're like being crazy. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, you're just like, like, what are you, do? you man, chill. <laughs> and I'm like, what, why? You know, so then I was like. I know a guy who hangs around with is um, Eric Andre is telling you to chill. <laughs> <laughs> that is not good. This guy has seen fucking balls. Boy. Hannibal Burris has seen balls to his face <laughs> And he's Eric telling Andre. you to chill out. And he's telling you well, to chill. So Hannibal. God damn. He's he doing a show with a guy who fucked up a set. <laughs> yeah. By the way, which I'm going to be on that show this season. Season two. Season four, season and Hannibal four. Burris is played by a robot. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Two episodes, man. I'm there with uh, with Amber Rose. Really? Nice. And Dope. some basketball player and two cores from Breaking, Breaking Bad. Bad. Really? Nice. So what happened, bro? You uh, made a lot of great comics last night. I did. Um, yeah. One Good impression, huh? my reputation, man. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, no, I knew Hannibal from back in the day and stuff, so he was... 
like everyone that I was around last night knew me. It wasn't like I was just showing up. Like everyone knew, like Dustin's fucked up, dude. What the? Uh, what see, but I, I'm glad I left you alone because they would have saw you with me. They would have said, "Oh, he's doing crack too oh, now." Oh shit! Uh, Felipe are bringing him down. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they would. <laughs> you gotta get That's away from that influence, bad influence. Right? <laughs> For you, they're on the way down. No, so, this morning. So I then called. what happened, bro? This morning. This morning, I'm. What happened? The laugh factor oh. on the way out. This more. Well, my girlfriend. Outside. Okay, yeah. So, so talking to you outside or inside? Where where are we at right now? Laugh Factory? Laugh Factory. Okay. When, that, when they're telling you about, hey, man, you're fucking yeah, you fucked go, up. You you're like go. a wild animal. Yeah, and so from there, I'm like, whatever, blah, blah, blah. We just walk down to uh, the comedy store, you know? Go in there. Hannibal's there, all those cats. Nick's there. Um, just Nick who? Gara. And, trying to open uh, up for somebody. <laughs> there was a, uh, but we, yeah, we just went in there and I was, just, it was actually, that's, the most fucked up I was, was, I'm guessing, at the Laugh Factory. Because everything after that I remembered pretty good. You know what I'm saying? I remembered, I remember calling the Uber. I remember like, I remember looking at everyone and thinking like, yeah, I'm fucked up. And I just, Does this happen on the regular? <sighs> you know, it's weird <laughs> lately, man. I've been yeah. doing stand-up for like uh, like 12 years, man. I started when I was like 16. I never really drank or anything. Really? I don't know. Last year has been just like, I don't know, man. So anyway, I called the Laugh Factory this morning, and I talked to Ico. I'm like, listen, I'm sorry. I, I'm so sorry. I messed sorry, up. I'm very sorry. Bro. I'm, the, I'm the one who wrote that blog about you, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I was Negative like, review on Yelp. <laughs> Did you read that? <laughs> no. I read that. That was messed up, man. It sounded um, like a disgruntled, unfunny, open mic wrote that's that. That's what it sounds really? like. Yeah. And well, where was the... Employee. Oh. But if you ever worked at the Laugh Factory, you know... It's not really the manager's fault. It goes beyond all the way to the top. Yeah. 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 You know what sucks about stand up? There's so many examples. Getting a bad review uh, by Adam Hunt. <laughs> <Hunt, Hunt, Hunt. laughs> <laughs> a bad review by Adam Hunt. <laughs> did he give you a blood? <laughs> I still remember the one bad review you did at, at a hotel. I was it where you guys that were? Fuck that motherfucker. Richard Dollar. No, 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 Victor Dollar. Victor Dollar. So forgot his name. Good. Victor Dollar, bro. <laughs> I got into a fight at the Sheraton Hotel. Are you serious? Because I walked in there after doing radio, and I saw a buffet line, and I thought, fuck it, it's for everybody, you know? Yeah. But they didn't see that it was belonged to some a corporate yeah. event. <laughs> so then the manager, but it was set up in the lobby, right? It was set up in the lobby. Yeah. And the manager yeah. told me, put that oatmeal down. <laughs> and I said, fuck you. Who the fuck are you? Put right? that oatmeal down? If I had a gun, I probably would have shot that motherfucker in the foot. Dog. <laughs> Cowboy style. He said, put Cowboy that style. oatmeal down. Like, I was a child. And I said, who the fuck are you? Uh, and then I said, um, and he never answered who he was. He never answered who he wow. was. He didn't say who he is. So to me, he said, though, he's Hank Hill. You know, he's going to get punched. So then I put the oatmeal down. I put it down. I put it down by your feet. So I put it down by his feet. <laughs> right in front of his feet. <laughs> he made some house clean pick, pick her up. Oh, that's wow. messed up. Then I said, I'm out. He goes, Sen. He goes, you're not used to uh, dealing with a real Mexican, huh, motherfucker? <laughs> Fuck you. And I went back to my room, man. He went back to his office. <laughs> <laughs> and I wrote a bad review on his ass. <laughs> you can probably still find it, too. What's it's it? still on there, bro. I got yeah. like 300 likes. <laughs> Aika was cool though this morning. She was like, Dustin, we all love you. Um, you could come tonight you, if you're, you're, you're a good. St- well, I'm actually at the show. I'm on the show tonight. I was, there supposed- you go. I was, I was kind of making sure I wasn't banned. You know, I was yeah. making sure I was still on the show tonight. She was like, Yeah, it's 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 cool. You know, we just talked. We had a good heart to heart, and I was like, You know, what sucks about it? like comedy. Heart to heart, Rasa. Bro, yeah, in comedy you can almost see your future just because you've seen so many comics. You know, and you're just like, oh, that's my path. I'll I'll do that, and then I'll get sober, and then I'll, you know, you just. Felipe has been through that shit. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I look at that, and I'm like, oh, well, and Felipe among like countless other comedians, and it's like, well, that's probably what's gonna happen. Yeah. Yeah, but the pause button gets hit several times. You know? Yeah, man. The pause button on your career. Oh yeah, yeah, I know, and I can feel that. That's what I can. Dude, <sighs> yeah. But that's how most comics are, you know, man. Like. Like, right now, you're, like, dealing with um, a lot of shit in your head, you know? Your lady's delivering food. Um, <laughs> fuck it. You're working on a pilot, you know? Uh, you're fucking yeah. so stressed out about this shit. We wanted this, I had a show. This shit has to sell. You had a show. You, you got were, things um, working out. You were on Batman. 
you know, and now now is the perfect time to destroy all this shit. Yeah, yeah dude. That's <laughs> a comics thing. <laughs> I don't see, understand you how it all comes together right you now. You wouldn't do but... this? You wouldn't do this if you had nothing going on. Yeah. If you had nothing going on, there's no point of getting fucked up. Cause there's nothing to destroy. My and everything Felipe just me. said, that sounds like a good start, man, for how many years you're in? 12, right? That's impressive. That's 12, impressive. You're in 12? Yeah, you're about the yeah. time to destroy your career. <laughs> it's about the time, right? Yeah. yeah. So man, like some people do it do early, like Dylan Garcia. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, they were too early. Good example, right yeah. there. Good example, hey, bro. But Felipe, I've seen you, man. God, yeah, man. I was fucking God Munson, bro. You know what's weird, man? <laughs> I still remember one time we drove up. I don't even remember. I had my Chrysler 300. You're like looking for a ride up to a show in the middle of nowhere. And it was like a bar. You took me? I took you. <laughs> See, that's how fucked up you were, probably. And, uh,. My velvet rope story. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say. There was like maybe 60 people at the show. It was a bar, but everyone was. A red was car like, you had, right? No, it was a black oh, black car. I never had a, a nice black, black shiny car. Yeah, nice rims. Yeah. It's all coming to me. Let me <laughs> Yo, we go way back though. Like I don't 10, remember that. Look, keep throwing, bro. We go, we go way back. Do you remember you used to fucking bank at the credit union with yeah, me? Yeah, man. When I first, people, by the way, uh, this is, we are, our guest here is um, Eddie Valdez. What's up? A.K.A. Ezra, A.K.A. fucking Eddie. <laughs> That's it. This guy, we I know him from way back. Yeah. We go way back, man, like uh, way back. When this fool used to go to the Laugh Factory and watch the shows when Benny Mena was hosting. Yeah, Benny Mena this introduced me to you. This is after Joy Medina. Yeah. We used to go to fucking hang out at Dublin. No, this was before Joy Medina. Before Joy Medina. Be before Joy we used to go to Miyagi's, right? After the show? I've never went with you to or Miyagi's. Or Dublin's. Dublin's I've been to a couple times, yeah. But uh, yeah, Benny introduced me to you. Uh, you are probably one of the first comedian friends I had. I used to go to the shows a lot. I, I, and I got into comedy late, too, as far as being a fan and listening to comedy. And um, I worked at a credit union doing yes. loans. <laughs> and I had a, 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 a lean on my fucking... I, I had a lean on my... Account on my I lean on it a hold on everything. State yeah, lean, like I own child state, support. Yeah, for child support. I couldn't uh, get a bank so, loan so, anywhere, bro. So this fool said, I'll, I'll hook it up. Yeah, I was like, hey, you can bank with me. Man. Come cash your checks. I'll cash them right away. I won't put holds on your. Uh, that was check. badass. Don't think you. That, shit <laughs> Dude, that is man. That because lot, you know when you bro. deposit your checks right away, they'll put a hold on that shit and won't let you uh, withdraw. Oh, so sucks. I would I would release the checks right away and he would just take the money out. Yeah, man. Ooh. Damn. For child support. No. I was trying try to catch my check at Wells Fargo. Then those fools fucking made me open up a checking account. So I opened it up. And then like a week later, the $4,000 check the four thousand dollar check turned into $3,000. No, it turned into $1,000, bro. Uh, who do you complain to? That nobody. You can't. Yeah. You can't. I mean, you owe child support. So that's what I'm saying. Don't get nobody pregnant in California. Exactly. <laughs> I haven't you done lose. that yet. That's the thing too, man. I've got that, like there's certain things. I'm like, you know what? You're doing all right, Dusty. You haven't. You, you don't have anyone there pregnant. You, you know. So this fool screaming out of the Volvo, right out of the car. Now you know, screaming out of the Volvo. Not all, just all the way from <laughs> Bobby Bowman's house. Not uh, just screaming out. My whole body was out of the car, yeah, like he that fits scene in the dark body. night. I was the Joker, man. I was like, <laughs> yeah, we have the same type of body, you know, a very yeah. long torso and short legs. <laughs> <laughs> so his legs are dangling, but his whole body yeah. is reaching out and grabbing my head on the other side. Of the <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> he has that foot. <laughs> Dustin Ibarra has that cat dog body. I know. Yeah, it's a very, yeah. <laughs> he can reach, but he can't kick your ass. Yeah. It's weird, yeah. <laughs> so he's yelling, bro. <laughs> Any Pokemon's here? And then I know he, we're driving. And of course, you know, um, Peter uh, Murrieta. He lives not too far away from Bobby Bowman's house because they have uh -huh. badass houses, dog. Nice. So we're going, and we see him walking, you know, with a fucking backpack. <laughs> Fucking 50, 48 year old writer, showrunner <laughs> of Way of Wizards of Maybury. And this fool yells out the Wizards, Wizards of Waverly Place. <laughs> I, I, all I yelled, I just said showrunner! Showrunner! <laughs> we need a showrunner! <laughs> He texted me after that and said, have a good set, man. <laughs> I my, think my that was a little bit like, you. you know what's up, man. That's Yo, like, has been around. Text me. What's up. Text me to see how your set went. Uh, that was more like texting to see if you're alive. <laughs> Yo, so do you still have that account at the credit union? I do. Really? Hell yeah. They, wow. they're, they're called Novo now. New Vision. New Vision. New Vision. Damn. Oh, man. I'm still there, dog. 
And um, so they were yelling out the window all the way to the improv, man. So I made sure I parked my car far away from cars. <laughs> where do we even park, man? I don't even remember. We like... parked over there where the where the designer parks parking lot is. Oh, okay, yes. Nobody has ever parked there to buy clothes. No shit, the Fred Siegel, right? Fred Siegel. Yeah. Fred Siegel, by the way, is really the improv parking. If you ever need yeah. free parking, if you go to the improv parking. Yeah, well, that's there. at night, right? When they're closed anyway, so. Yeah. But sometimes they started tripping for a little bit. Really? Yeah, the valet dudes. Yeah. You got to give them a little dollar, bro. Yeah. Give them a little joint. That's what you got to do. You got to go. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good thing. Most of them are Mexican. You just talk to them in Spanish and it's all good. I got to use drugs to get people on my side. <laughs> Right. That works too. So where, that's where? why I got Felipe on my side. Hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> that fool had blood too. I forgot about that. Uh, that's fine. It was Edro, yeah. and, and, it, and it was it was Edro because of Dro. You know, the <laughs> yeah. The... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought even last night we you had to bring that Phoenix that. shit. <laughs> no, that shit was horrible, man. Horrible. I man. used to have to get it from here and take it to Phoenix. That's why Edro came about because yeah. I would bring the good shit to Phoenix. I was living in Phoenix for a while, but anyways, I was at the credit union for five years. And always going to the comedy clubs. Benny also introduced me to Russell, who I work for, Russell Peters. And that's how I started off with him. I, I worked at this credit union. My mom, she's unemployed, sells perfumes, colognes, whatever she gets her hands on. She goes to the swap meet. And, uh, Son tu perfumes, la mujer. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, so <coughs> a friend of hers that works at a she warehouse. She a fake cologne, like instead of Gucci. No, she was selling good Gucci. shit. She was selling fake clothes, though, like fake uh, baby, baby. Is that how you say it? Baby, when seven, that shit was popular. There were six. <laughs> Instead of seven, there were L's. <laughs> Instead of seven jeans, there were L jeans. So she she uh, had a friend who gave her a box of facial products. She's like, why don't you help me sell that shit? I was like, what am I going to do? Go door to door? What the fuck? <laughs> She's like, tell your friends, tell your coworkers it's really good shit. I was like, you know what? Let me try eBay. Started selling that shit on eBay. We were making bank. Have you ever heard of this shit? It's called Dermalogica. Really expensive, high-end shit. Yeah. Yeah, so we we sold. We're selling a what bunch of shit. What does do though? To it's like uh, acne? facial products for wrinkle creams, uh, all kinds of beauty supplies. And uh, my mom was starting to make bank off of that shit. I was doing it for her using the Almost postage meter. Uh, for a box that we had, each little cream would be like eighty to ninety dollars on eBay. I would sell it for. So in one month, we made like five six G's, and just selling the shit on eBay. So I told my mom, I don't know where you got this shit from, but if you can get it, it for works. a good price, I don't know. I mean, it was it's po it's a popular product though. Dude, that's awesome. I love like things like that. I used to sell noni with my. Noni. Do you know what I'm like Tahitian noni or something? Wow. It, it was one of those things like it's a miracle. So it's made up, dude. Yeah, my mom no, somehow got noni. into it and like made what me noni do it. Like, I don't know. It's like it's like some. It's this juice that's like. Oh yeah, I think oh, I've heard of it. Yeah, the, but that's like a pyramid type of setup, is, no? Yeah. Right. <laughs> this one, yeah. This wasn't. Yeah. So what happened? Um, we ended up with all this noni water. Oh, wow. <laughs> so See, we're, we're buying this shit from this guy who worked at the warehouse, right? So he was just selling it out of his trunk. He was probably stealing it from the warehouse, and that's what ended up happening. Me what? and my mom. Me and my mom got charged with receiving stolen goods. And we got sentenced to six months jail time with what? a felony. Oh, my God, dude. With a felony. The amount of shit that my mom had at her house was valued at over $50,000. Oh, man. The cops came into the credit union where you used to come and cash your checks. And they're oh. like, you have to come with us. And they didn't, they didn't put me in cuffs, but they're like, you have to come with us. When do you start crying? Dude, I, I was went, like... Immediately, I'd be like... Right, right away, I didn't know what the fuck was going on, right? I, I cooperated. I, I told my boss, yo, I gotta go. There's I gotta go. There's, a, there's, a, there's an emergency, Obviously. right? There's an emergency. Um, put a death in the family. Gotta go. <laughs> hey, I got food poisoning. <laughs> they put us in jail, man. And, and uh, the hack police. A, de a, de a detective came and started asking us about the shit that we were selling on the internet. Investigation, then. Yeah. Oh, damn. They're like, so what is this stuff you're, you're selling on, on the internet? I was like, some facial products? No like, where, where do you get it from? I was a friend of ours. They put us in cuffs. We are in jail. And, uh, you know, we, we got bailed out. We went through the whole fucking court process. And our lawyers told us, you know what? You're going to have to take the, the whatever, the... The rap. The, you're going to have to take... You should um, claim you that you're, you're guilty because uh, there's no way to get out of it. We're buying fucking facial products out of a guy's trunk. You know, it, it's one of those things where if you're buying Avon or Mary Kay. You're supposed to buy from a licensed representative. And uh, who so we, we for a license for Herbalife? I know, right? <laughs> but so we got charged. We got charged with receiving stolen goods. And because the amount of shit that my mom had in her house, it was a felony and six months jail time. 
How much time your mom do? My mom did two days, thank God. I don't know if the uh, jail was oh, overpopulated man. or the computer just kicked her out. Mm -hmm. I did three months in fucking county jail. So you took the you took the rap? No, I did. They they said I was the uh, the mastermind of the whole operation. The eBay account was in my name. The PayPal account was in my name. I was fucking using the postage meter at work. Which is a federal offense. Oh. <laughs> and we <laughs> opened up a checking account for a guy. Yeah, I was cashing checks for fucking Felipe. I was risking my job way back. See, <laughs> and you weren't even drinking. That's, <laughs> that's I'm like, you know. Well, so well, because well, of that, my career down the drain, dude. I, well, uh, what took you to fuck up in a year? Took first to borrow thirty minutes that night. Thirty. Uh, yeah, oh, here's what would be the real thing if tonight, because tonight it's so funny how all this works. Tonight's a big industry showcase. Oh shit! And I'm on go. the show, and it's like, Martha's gonna be there from the, the garment industry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, so yeah, man. Felony account. Felony on my record. I get out January of 09. I did three months, so I, uh, I turned myself in November of 08. I missed Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's. I get out January of 09. Econ economy's at its worst. Imagine trying to find a job with a felony on your record. And, uh, dude, it was the lowest point in my life. I was like, what the fuck am I going to do now? I tr my mom tried to take the blame. I was just doing this shit to help her. All the money was going to her. And it fucked up my career. I can't go back into that industry because I, I have a felony on my record. And uh, Russell Peters, who's my boss now, seven World years in August. World famous comedian. World famous comedian. Seven years now in August, I'll be with him. And, uh, yeah, the first weekend I get out, I have a text from him. He's saying, hey, well, I'm at the Brain Improv. Come hang out if you're even out of jail. I was like, shoot, I just got out. <laughs> I go kick it with him. First thing, right when I get to the brand improv, he's, I see him at his car. He's opening his trunk. He's got DVDs. I'm, what the fuck do I do? Hey, you, you need help selling those? Like, fuck, like, if I didn't learn my fucking lesson? <laughs> but no, he gave me the box of DVDs. Like, sure, you know, maybe help me sell them. And that's how it started. Just he invited me on the road, took a couple trips with him. He paid for everything. He had an assist, another assistant at that time, which he hated. And uh, I kind of stepped in and started helping him out little by little. And uh, yeah, I was just helping him out with a few things. And then he trusted me enough to house it for him one time. And that's when I was like, you know what? I'm going to wash all these cars, maybe have my mom come and clean the house, organize his closet. And uh, that's when he, in August is when he asked me if I wanted to work for him full time. So, man, I got lucky. I don't know where the fuck I'd be because I, I tried finding a job during that whole time. And it was not possible, man. So seven years now in August, and uh, put it this way, he doesn't even know what side his gas tank is on. So, <laughs> you know, I'm fucking in charge of the flights, transportation, hotels, dry clean, groceries, fucking paying the gardener, the pool cleaner, the maid, whatever take, needs take to be done. Take his mom gambling. Take his mom gambling to Vegas. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Penny slots all day, man. <laughs> so that's all she cares about. face. <laughs> but dude, uh, just in two years, these last two years, we did 25 countries, 150 cities. Get so you could travel now? Travel the world. I, even even when I was uh, on probation, the first year, where the first week of every month I had to be in L.A. to check in with my probation officer, mm -hmm. no matter where we fucking traveled, we were always home the first week of the year. It just worked out. It's crazy. And uh, I traveled without ever getting permission, which I was risking it, but shit worked out. Breaking the law. Yeah. But now I'm off, pro uh, I'm off probation, of course, and uh, got the felony removed from my record. So How'd you do that? I'm trying to get a... Uh, uh I got a, I don't even got a felony and I no? can't get removed. Really? I, I was a, I got a, I was charged for, with for having an ounce of crack. Damn. No ounce, two, yeah, two, an ounce and a half. Of crack. Do you have a previous record? I mean, I don't, I don't have well, a previous happened, record. That happened in 1991 when wow. I was 18. Damn. And I went to court. No, I didn't even go to court. Uh -huh. I, I got um dismissed. It got a DA reject. Okay. But when I go to Canada, that shit shows up. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's well, that's what shows up. So I was getting into Canada fine all the time, and just recently last year they they didn't, they kicked me out. They're like, you can't get in. I was like, why? I've, I've been in there. They told me I can't get in. You have to fly back home. Oh, and then that they came to get you at the at, one time. no no it was at it was at the airport. It was at the airport, and Russell got pissed. I actually made the news because he was on was Twitter it. talking shit about the Canada immigration, and uh -huh. I was in there like three times before that year. And uh, I guess finally they looked up my record and they. Now every time I go in, they have to go into secondary, and I had to go to a lawyer and make sure my felony was completely dismissed. They just had to give me a paper to get in. You know? <laughs> I flew to Montreal Comedy Festival in 2005, no problem, and flew back, no problem. Yeah. Went to Amsterdam, Rotterdam, flew back, no problem. And um, the first time on the way to um, 
to uh, Canada to work with Russell. Yeah. When I worked with Russell that month. Oh, yeah, October, the Canada tour. You did that whole Canada I tour, w- too, right? They held me there for a long-ass time. And then uh, on the way back, they held me again. Wow. But when I flew in on a private jet, no yeah, problem. No problem, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, and but when did you get kicked out, then? After touring with Russell or before? No, I didn't, I didn't get, I didn't get, I've never been kicked out. I've just oh, okay. been held. I made yeah. my, fr- I made that, my flight. That's going to happen every time. It's going to no happen every what, time, huh? no matter what, oh, because now you're, you're on the computer. So you've been three hours or four hours earlier than now. It depends how busy the airport is. But like every time I go now, I got to expect to be held and uh, get questioned. Even though I, ha- I just got to show my paperwork. They got to fucking check that I haven't been convicted of anything else. I'm feeling so much better about life after hearing these stories, you know. Dude, man. Felonies here and felonies Don't get there. a felony, Don't get man. a felony, man. Like, fuck. <laughs> I, I, that, I mean, yeah, you know what? You're a comedian. Won't. You can have a felony. That's fuck. like Joe Diaz. Don't go to Toronto. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, no, go, bro. <laughs> I'm in for kidnapping. Oh, they go. Oh. <laughs> Shout out to the real Joe Diaz. Not the real Joe Diaz I just said. Not Joey Coco Diaz. This is the real Joe Diaz listening in Orlando and heard about me on Mediocre Time with... Tom and Dan, the mediocre podcast was Tom and Dan. They do it out of our backyard. Awesome podcast. Very professional. His name just happens to be Joey Diaz. Thanks oh, for shit. listening, Joey. Kelly Importa. Que te importa? <laughs> Who has been listening to the show since the beginning. She wrote a comment for us on SoundCloud about going to a Rodrigo and homie show at the Ice House soon after her mother passed away and how much better it made her feel. Thanks, Kelly. Importa. Nice. Ma- Mario, too. Mario Z. Mario Z, listening from San Antonio. His father-in-law introduced him to my stand-up special, and they're both fans. It gives them something to do, you know? Two guys hanging out. Mm-hmm. Mario is also a recovering addict who has started to become more open about his past since he started listening to the show, and now he's doing testimonials all over the place. Damn. I used to be a cholo. Thanks for listening, Mario, <laughs> and I'll see you in San Antonio in September. I thought it was October. How long have you been sober, huh? Felipe? November. Me? Uh, yeah. I haven't drank since 2009. Damn. No way. Are you serious, Six dude? Six years. You're Damn. drinking a beer right now, no? Yeah. I was like, hungover, bro. Yeah, I was really hungover when I got here. For a time, bro, this fool fucked up. By the time I left him, he said, all right, eh, I'll get a ride home. I got footage of this fool <laughs> fucked up. Oh, yeah. no. I put it on, on Snapchat. No. Let's oh, see if you can hear him. I put it on is. And um, the food, the funny man, this food gets more Mexican when I was there. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that, my Mexican side coming out. It was crazy, man. If we want to take over the world. Do you speak Spanish, Dustin? No. <laughs> yeah, no. Poquito. <laughs> so this um, Dustin oh, no. Ibarra right here. Oh, shit. Looking like Jim Pompa's son. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> it's you bad boy. No, you have to push it all the way in the aux cable. Oh, that was bad. This is this is bad. Oh god. What's up, everybody? Hello, guys. I'm <laughs> What's up? You fucking fucking fuck ass. <laughs> Good intro fucking, right there. Fucking fuck ass. That's a good intro if you ever have so, a show. So right the there. like, he started, <laughs> hug, he started hugging me. <laughs> That'll be funny, huh? And there. That's the your fu- what's up, fool. The <laughs> <photo there. laughs> the wrestling me, man, by the stairs. And that's when you uh, choked him out with the velvet rope or what? Hell yeah, bro. <laughs> we look like the Malashi brothers, bro. <laughs> We're like the two Mexican bushwhackers. Oh, yo, I got a good story. We're ready to fuck somebody up, too. Hey, we went to go, we went to go see a house. Russell was thinking of buying another house. And uh, the real estate agent didn't want us to know uh, who the seller was. So we're walking around the house, fucking indoor basketball court, selling for $11 million. Badass house. And uh, I walk in the pantry, and there's Mazapan, Guerrero, Tostadas. I was like, this guy's got to be Mexican. Uh, walking around the house, there's a bunch of boxing gloves all over the walls, and they're signed by Chavez, Barrera, Marquez, Canelo. He's got to be Mexican. And then uh, we go up to the theater room. There's three post- movie posters, A Day Without a Mexican, Muppet <laughs> Babies movie. Blood and Blood Out. And, um, and Beverly Hills Chihuahua, which had a lot of Mexican actors in it. <laughs> so I was like, who the fuck is this guy? And uh, the, the real estate agent is like, you're not going to find out. If you, do, know, yeah. if you do, I'll give you $1,000. Oh, man, the internet is a powerful thing, man. I started looking on there, and there was uh, two banners in the basketball court that said Daniel and Edward. I was like, one of them's got to be Daniel or Edward, or maybe that's the son's names. Anyway, I ended up finding out 
You know whose house that was? Ooh. Piolin in La Mañana. Oh, shit. Really? $11 million house. I was like, then I started looking into him. I was like, uh, when he was the hottest show in, in L.A., he was making five mil a year. He Whoa. still can't afford that house. He, he made his money. One. He made his money in real estate. He b- bought a house, sold it for a shitload of money, and it sucks with everything that happened to him. You hear what happened to him? No. Because of sexual harassment. He got he got sued for sexual harassment. He said he was groping his uh, coworkers, dude, changing right? in front of them. When was this? A dude, right? Yeah, but it was more like I think it was it was more like. Rabbit. It was more like grab ass yeah. and making the guy feel comfortable, you know, like, you know how paisas do it, bro. Yeah. Hey, come on. Let's see him in culo. Show me how he, he fucking is, he had to leave the, he got, he had to leave the show. And I think that's why he had to sell the house. Yeah, <laughs> and he ended what? up going to, to um a, a smaller station. I can't believe it. I think he's crazy. doing serious like, like stuff. Like, yeah, really? Yeah, he's on serious. That's why he is on yeah, serious. He, and um, <clears throat> he was working on a pilot with um, Paul Rodriguez. And his like, neighbors with Marco Antonio Solis and Britney Spears. <laughs> That's a lot of money for a disc jockey to have, like no Howard shit. Stern money. Right? Yeah, man, I was surprised. <laughs> well, he was did surprised. beat up Howard Stern when he was here. Really in LA? Damn. Is it's this a, a, is a Spanish station yeah. or is it like it's all, is the it's guy? All Spanish. He's he's okay. he's like the big boy of Mexican. Radio. I know. I've seen his uh, posters. Like yeah. I guess they're not up anymore though. But no. Yeah, when I, yeah. Look, I would he see has him some all nice time. veneers. Let me tell you. Yeah. He'd, and that's right. And then I would always see him at the at the boxing fights. You know, Russell's a big boxing fan, and I was like. Damn, this guy, he made good friends with him. And finally, yeah, Berlin is real cool, man. Also, it's another guy that makes a lot of money in radio. I don't know if he's still around. El Kukui. Kukui, yeah. Kukui was, uh, he's the OG of it, right? He started yeah. that a long time ago. He got out, he got let go too because he got too political. Really? <clears throat> oh, yeah, man. That's what's going to happen. So, what's there. up, fool? Uh, upcoming shows, man. I'll be in Corpus Christi, Texas, July 21st to the 23rd. At Mesquite Street Comedy Club, New York City, July 28th to the 31st. At Caroline's on Broadway. Tell all your friends, I'm coming to New York, biatches. Yeah. West West Palm Beach, Florida, August 4th through the 7th at the Improv. And we have a few free tickets to give away for these shows. So email me at fans at felipesworld.com for West Palm Beach only. And say, what's up, fool? Give me some tickets. Hermosa Beach, California, August 10. One night nice. only at the Comedy Magic Club. One night good only. Good club, good club. Tucson, Arizona, August 12. Pueblo, California, August 13. One night nice. only at the IC, at the TCC Music Hall in Tucson, Arizona. Also, one so, night only at Pueblo Memorial Mall or Hall. Don't worry, people. I know that you guys have a Pueblo, California, Pueblo, Colorado. There's been a lot of Latino shows that been over there that been canceled, but Felipe will not cancel because this show is gonna sold out, sell out. So all your friends to be there. What you got going on, Dustin Ibarra? Um, I'm at Comedy Magic Club August 19th, and uh, yeah, I'll be over there then. Um, Hyenas Comedy Club in um, like September. Look it all up at DustinIbarra.com. Unless they're all nice. taken away by then, I might have ruined everything by then. So. <laughs> also, shout out to um, our. Past guest, Rafael Cardenas. He has a book that came out right now. It's called The um, Masaka, photographed by Rafael Cardenas. Uh, you guys remember him? He was on our show. Tell him, did he, we see that? And he talked about um, every day he took a photo in Boyle Heights and he started late Damn. every day for 365 days. Wow. And so all of the photos that he picked out of the 365 days are in his book that's $200. But it's a good coffee book, and he'll sign it. It's a fucking badass book. If you're into Boyle Heights, East LA, and the East Side, also there's a photo of me of, of me in there that he what took. What page? Of me. What page? Uh, it's um, under the Sixth Street Bridge. Better memorize that page number. It's um, it's in there, <laughs> and they're all in Stop. black and white, and it's a good collection of photos. Also, a cheaper book is, will be out later on in the future. But this book right here, only a limited edition are coming. Only a hundred of them. Oh, so Damn. get them now. And he'll, it's a hard book cover. Nobody makes hard book no more. No, but only hardcore, baby. Yeah. <laughs> you can get it at rafa.la. Rafa.la. Also, man, I supposed to give a shout out nice. to somebody. Um, I was in San Diego. Also, July 15, there's no Humphreys by the Bay Show. No show in San Diego. That show has been moved to October 21st. 21st. 
And shout out to my homie out there at the record store. Feel It Records in San Diego. Feel It Records. This guy always promotes my show, and he always hooks me up with comedy albums, and he hooked me up with his Gallagher album. Nice. It's a, a comedy album of Gallagher, and if you open the inside, there's um, throw-up pieces of bananas and <laughs> a baby hammer. <laughs> Have I you got done Humphreys in San yeah. Diego? Yes, for Last Comic Standing, though. Oh, that's just that, that venue is dope. It's badass. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I got to... Uh, you know, when you're at the improv, you always meet people. You know, if you're into like the party scene, like Dustin Ibarra, you know, people got to meet Dustin Ibarra and Felipe <laughs> Sparza last night. We saw Eliza Schleslinger. I reached out to shake her hand. She reached out for the hug. I said, okay, let's hug oh, it up. Dope. We saw Margaret Cho. Not, oh, damn, shit. Nice. I forgot about that. That's right. Killing oh, it. She's been in it for a while. Yeah. Margaret Cho is there. Yeah. And um, Chris Newberg. Yeah. Did and we so, run into Chris Newberg there? He said, what's up, man? He was sweating for that 20 minutes. Oh, he, oh yeah, he always sweats. Russell's taking Chris. him on the road uh, and to, to Asia with us, and he time went to the Middle East time. with us. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I, I loved him, man. Oh, yeah. And Felipe, you know, it's funny because when uh, for that Canada tour, and I remember one of the first big shows that he did for Russell was in Vegas. That's remember Vegas, that bro. And Russell was looking for someone to open up, and I mentioned you. And he's like, he's a... He's a headliner. He doesn't want to open up for me. He's like, hell yeah, he would. And uh, that's the how it started. Cannon. And Russell <laughs> Russell loved you when you did Vegas. And that's why he uh, had you do the Canada tour, too. I loved it, too, man. I was surprised by the money. I was like, I had to <laughs> chase him down. He'll, he'll pay. He's one of the higher paying comics like, as far as paying his opening. Damn, who's opening for him uh, right now? Let me get <laughs> no, in there. Get in line, buddy. Get in line. Yeah, I, dude, I know, right? Uh, uh. I know. Maybe that. if you showed up to the house for the movie. You know? I had like... <laughs> I, I, Edro, Edro can't even walk into a room without people to put in her, <laughs> giving them her 8 by 10 <laughs> <laughs> Their resume. Hey, man, how's Russell, by the way? Dude, Yo, I, bet you, I bet you they were talking Invite me to the set. show. It was Joey all like... Oh. Oh, he was bummed out, but they made it work. Whatever. It goes on. <laughs> big, big shot over there at a big meeting. <laughs> Yo, but that was right before uh, Last Comic Standing, too, that Vegas show, right? That was like the beginning the of beginning. the end for Felipe. Fool, let me tell you what <laughs> <laughs> Badass show, bro. One show at the Hilton. I got to meet fucking George Wallace. Ah, George Wallace yeah. is awesome, man. At the Hard Rock. Yeah. I got to meet George Wallace. Oh, yeah, he was at that show. That's right. He and came I got by. to meet um, um, Russell Peters, personal trainer in Vegas. Really? Yeah. Some black like fool. Oh, yeah. Damn, I forgot about that. What the fuck, Hank? I don't know his name, man. <laughs> I was, so. Get in shape, Larry. Hit up one of those funny names. <laughs> Get in shape, Larry. <laughs> let's go, champ. I don't know. <laughs> Who's, let's go, champ. I don't know his name. Oh, I don't even remember that. So this fool, man, started wrestling with me, man, by the bathroom. <laughs> I like how we go Was back to this. Was there a show going on? Yeah. <laughs> no, people were, get, were sitting down, barely. Oh, okay. They started sitting me down. So then I said, fuck it. We're at the Laugh Factory? Yeah. They got the velvet rope, bro, and started <laughs> spanking them with it, bro. <laughs> they were crawling up the stairs like a baby crying. <laughs> <laughs> I think I remember. Okay, that okay now you remember. Like, why why is my, I had a bloody That triggered his memory. Like, I must have felt that. <laughs> that triggered his memory. See that? Who's talking about crawling up the stairs <laughs> and crawled down? He, he got like carpet burns or something. <laughs> <laughs> they disappeared and hung up by the by, by the like the by the bar uh, for a long ass time. Damn, dude, there are people that I've got now. Right now, I'm going through that anxiety of like, you know how like you're like, oh, who else did I run into? Who else could have? Did I fuck up? And what? Because there's this, a buddy of mine was there, Daniel Wine. Daniel Boone. Now Daniel Weingarten, I remember seeing him, but I'm like, I remember he was kind of being a dick. And whenever you're drunk and someone's being a dick, you kind of are Who's like, Daniel? I was probably being a dick. You know? Who's that? Damn, Daniel. He's a buddy of mine. A oh, comic. Uh, he goes uh, ha ha. Uh, oh. He's really fine. What's the last time you've been to the ha ha? Fucking. <laughs> since the last time I was there, bro. The old ha ha. I, I the tried to ha-ha. choke the devil at the ha ha. Mm. You tried to what? Choke the devil. Choke the devil? Huh? 2007, Damn. man. What the fuck, that? <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Oh, Jeff, Jeff Garcia. Jeff <laughs> Garcia. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> I think I heard that story. I threw water in his face. He threw water in my face. So I, I figured that's going to lead to a fight. What? Yeah. So then I started chasing. Then that fool ran like a bitch, dog. Yeah. That's ran. Crazy. Wait, so are you guys cool now or no? Hell no. <laughs> he ran, bro. I never I never seen a guy run from a fight. But he ran. And they started taunting me like a little kid. Like, hey. Like trying to hide and shit like this. <laughs> 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 Hiding, dog. 
He was hiding behind a female. What? <laughs> so, la Puente so, Bad Boy. So he was hiding, <laughs> supposed to be La Puente Bad Boy, bro. I'm he, from La Puente, so I kind of feel, uh, kind of <laughs> embarrasses me a little <laughs> that he ran away from me. He's a little girl, bro. That's funny, man. A little bitch. <laughs> How do you see? How do you so not you like? So he ran from a fight, and you know, if you're not fucking jump, well, jump with a fucking get to the. If you're gonna dance with the devil, bro, yeah, you better get ready to lead or follow, bro. So, so why did he, you threw water his face first? Yeah, and why? Oh, cause you know, like he kept like you know he kept talking and talking and like he didn't let me talk. Oh, he didn't let God. my wife talk, so nobody could get a word in. Then I then I finally got my word in, and I said fighting words, bro. I got in his face and I said, "Listen, man, I don't give a fuck if you made four hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, you made that shit with cartoons, bro. Yeah, you're you're not a real comedian. I'm a real comedian, bro. I'm funnier yeah. than you, and that's why your wife wants to suck my dick. Oh shit, <laughs> dude! Felipe, and you still threw water at him I first. Threw water at him, bro. <laughs> I hear a story like that, and I'm like, if I'm that just, like me, bro, me. I'm the kind of guy, dude. Bro, when you fuck with me, I'm gonna make it as uncomfortable to walk into the city, bro." Dustin, the shit you've done is nothing. Bro, I was just thinking, okay, bro. If that happened to me, I would wake up every day for the rest of my life thinking, what have I done? Oh, oh man. Felipe <laughs> has burned <laughs> some bridges, bro. God damn, you have, man. That's not even a bridge, bro. That's a fucking ramp. <laughs> Downhill, too. <laughs> That's a fucking boost, bro, to get a book. Damn, dude. Yeah. That's crazy, man. <laughs> I don't burn bridges, bro. I burn ramps. I fucking need, I need you to fucking... I burn you on the way up. <laughs> I should be a bumper sticker, bro. I don't burn bridges. I burn ramps, bro. <laughs> So then, for that's not like the first time I ran into that motherfucker, right? Yeah. So I feel, when I won last comic stat, like no, this fool like afterwards, like since like you can't beat up Felipe physically, you know, so you gotta go another bitch way, right? So yeah. this fool, um, Jeff Garcia was headlining the Ice House, right? And um, Lisa was a, a waitress there, so he he went to go talk to the manager and say, man, I feel very, very uncomfortable if this girl works here. Damn. Without even saying, it's because I don't like Felipe Esparza, so I'm what a little the bitch. Fuck. So that's been. So oh, that, that's, that's the be, worst. Man. That's, that's the that, worst. I can't stand that when when it happens in comedy. It ha when, I, yeah. when comics go out of their way to fucking you know to yeah, say don't shit. let this comic. Joe, Joe Coy did that too, bro. Shit. The Laugh Factory, yeah. Joe Coy. Oh, see, you don't he's like hard. Coy, he's yeah. hard to find, bro. Oh he's man. He's hard to grasp. Wherever he's at, like he's. He has like a Pokemon. Joe Cole is like a Pokemon, bro. You're trying to catch with no Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> so I couldn't, I couldn't hold him. The devil, Jeff Garcia, I could hold him. Did you try to fight Joe Cole? I didn't know nah, you guys bro, hated he ran, each other. Bro. You got, you and Joe Cole like each other? Nah, fuck that fool. <laughs> <laughs> he he pulled the same bullshit, bro. But without even do, knowing that I didn't like him, he didn't like me. All of a sudden, Lisa can't work at the Laugh Factory because Jeff, because um, Joe Coy is there. But fuck Joe Coy, bro. He's yeah. out of my. He's out of my league. He's out of. <clears throat> you know, that's another ramp I had to burn. <laughs> <laughs> so, getting back to this motherfucker, right? So I'm at the sun, I'm at the sun, <laughs> I'm at the sunset room day and night, bro. Monday nights, getting fucked up there. You know, I talked about the enchilada casserole. And um, this fool shows up on the night that I won last comic stand. Nice. At the sunset room. I was sober. Bro. Oh, I have heard this story. I was sober, right? So this fool, this fool figures, you know, he showed up at the sunset room because I was going to be there. So he figured, you know, maybe Felipe, after winning $250,000, will want to <laughs> pick up an assault charge, too. <laughs> <laughs> that was his plan. <laughs> That was Jeff, Gar Jeff Garcia's plan. That was the devil. That was his plan, bro. If, if anybody's out there, that's why he's called the devil because the devil doesn't doesn't do shit to you. He plans shit out for you, for you to fuck up and make bad decisions. So that's what the devil is, the devil. So the devil shows up to... to <laughs> the devil showed up to Georgia. He was looking for a soda still. <laughs> he showed up to... the. Um, the sunset room, bro. The Puente, he, the, the, the Puente Bad Boy, dog. He's on stage, you know, doing his, his same bullshit comedy. Same shit I've heard since. Uh, what, that's one of the first comics I remember listening to. And 
Even now, when I see him, same the first shit. time you see him, he fools you, bro, like yeah. a fucking like, like a Ponzi scheme, you know? Yeah, he fools you with yeah. millions of dollars of comedy, <laughs> <laughs> right? But yeah. then you keep going back, you keep getting ten dollars here, <laughs> twenty dollars uh, here. Yeah. But but his comedy is like um, he'll ask us a cholo, a hey, fucking cholo, if you fucking learn how to fucking stab somebody, then he'll go, hey black guy, you win all the gold medals, hey white guy. <laughs> You fucking sue, whatever. Mm. Hey, Chinese guy, you fucking can't drive. Very generic. Fucking up my insurance. So then at the end of the show, he goes back to everybody. So he'll do a 10-minute bit about cholos, a 10-minute bit about blacks, a 10-minute bit about white people can't dance, a 10-minute bit about Chinese people can't drive, yeah. fucking raising my car insurance. That's why I'm driving out Hambra. You know what I mean? I know the bits. Yeah. It's a setup, bro. It's like a game. It's like yeah. an improv game, mm -hmm. what he does on stage. It's as bad as bringing out your fucking hands behind someone's back like Eric Blake. Yeah, yeah. It, oh, it, that's it, so funny. I back in the day, man. Yeah. Back when I first started comedy, I saw him in Corpus, and I remember it. killing someone, it. That's yeah, so funny it, too. But. Someone told me that because I uh, yeah, I was like, oh, this yeah. is hilarious, and yeah. then someone's like, yeah, Come yeah, on. but but that shit <laughs> that, that, that did it. yeah, the shit that Garcia Dunlop, does. Rest in peace. The yeah. shit that he does makes it look like he's dope with improv, but to it's the, the same to, shit. To the new audience. Yeah, to the new audience. But when you ask that food to write down a five-minute set for the Tonight Show, you know, is, is the audience going to be mic'd? <laughs> <laughs> so getting back to this fool, yeah. right? So this fool knows that I, I one last comic standing, you know, because he, his wife was probably voting for me. <laughs> the only reason I said that to him, bro, honestly, the only reason I said that to him because I knew that his wife cheated on him with a fireman. Ah. And I remember one time I showed up with an NYPD fire shirt at one of his shows. Oh, shit. That's hilarious. I, I was trying to find a fireman hat. But I couldn't. <laughs> Imagine, bro, your wife fucks a fireman and Felipe knows and he shows up with a water hose and a fireman hat. To fuck fire with hose you. wrapped around oh, your fucking neck like so a we scarf. We had for a while, bro. What's up with like... So, yeah, he was being introduced one time. I it all led, to, you know, he was being introduced one time. You guys ready for the greatest comedian ever? And I stand up, fucking loaded, like you were last night. And I yell, out, "Who's here? Fucking Gabriel Iglesias? Fuck that shit!" Oh, so there's two people at the same time, Gabriel and his show. Tell me more of your fucked up story. <laughs> so, I'm there, I gotta hear this. so I'm there at the sunset. He's at the sunset room doing. Dustin, that's game. next level. You gotta start talking shit to other comedians. Oh, I haven't done that yet. I hear that. That's where it's leading. <laughs> Yeah, man. You're in right sunset now, room. He's at the level of talking shit to pe about people without saying their names. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go home and yeah. guess yeah. and look it up on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm at the sunset room, and I know, just one last comic standing. I fucking just left a big-ass party for all the for the winners. Craig Robinson was there. The late Greg Geraldo was there. We had a one-on-one. -on -one. He turned down a lot of drugs that night, too, by the way. I saw him <laughs> turn down drugs. Wow. I got and, to meet him uh, once in New York. And oh, um, so after that shit, I saw fucking Roy Woods Jr. fucked up, bro. <laughs> like, fucked up. Like, really, motherfucker? <laughs> he was fucking really? loaded. Damn. Yeah, man. He was. I mean, his tweet was, um, yeah, man. Just <laughs> drinking away the third place blues. Oh, oh man. Or fourth place blues. <laughs> I was all mad, dog, because Lisa was looking like a fox. Oh, oh, that is so funny. She had a red dress, looking like a fox. And he goes, this is your price, too, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, motherfucker, I'm going to be a citizen, too. <laughs> and um, so after that, bro, they had this big old party also in East Los Angeles at some ghetto-ass bar, bro, where they used to pull guns out on people. <laughs> the Mongols used to hang out right there and the fucking um, Maravilla gang. No, uh, the, gold the Gold Room. It used to be called the East LA Rudy's, Rudy's Bar and Grill on Pomona. I used to go to East Side Love. Have you ever been there? Yeah, in Boyle Heights. So I'm there, bro, with a bunch of cholos. I'm wearing my suit. Yeah, 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 whatever. Then after that, I went to another party, three parties, bro. The <laughs> <sunset> <laughs> Last time he wore a suit, too, by the way. Yeah, the <laughs> sunset room, dog. You were so sober get, during this time? Yeah, like, man. So when I why get would you there, even go out? <laughs> <laughs> you were just one last comic, man. So yeah, over there, I man. <laughs> so I see Jeff Garcia, bro, the devil performing. <laughs> full. I awesome. walked up to him, and I fucking snatched the microphone. Oh, shit. Yeah, like a boss. Dude, <laughs> we, you, like, I, bro, if you, you want to see help, bro. how I snatched his phone, <laughs> the, you want to see how I snatched the microphone off his fucking woman hands? <laughs> 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 His hands feel like somebody that never hit nobody. 
<laughs> somebody that never grew up, nobody but a microphone. <laughs> but this fool never held a shovel, never held a box, never held a lawnmower. And I know that because Richard Villa used to mow his lawn. Oh, pots. shit. Yeah, what Rick, the fuck? Yeah, bro, I don't, I don't hold back. I used to watch the full podcast. But yeah. Get on the ratings. Damn, dude. So we're trying to get to 100, <laughs> goddammit. Fuck. So, anyway, Tino comedy. We're getting beat by yeah, man. <laughs> anyways. So, it's getting hot in so, here, man. So, <laughs> I snatched the microphone away from him, and I said, get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> you know, the media showed up, motherfucker. <laughs> Last comic standing winner. Yes. This is all in his face, by the way. Oh, he man. stands like my I'm breath. Like the- <laughs> he just feels my like sweat. There's anger. There's a <laughs> I'm going to be violated. I'm going to pick up a strike. I can't go into Canada. Anyway, so get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> Damn. So, real comedian showed up. I don't ask questions. I have a fucking set. What, what kind of question did he ask? Hey, 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 where you from? Hey, hey, hey. Real comedian, motherfucker. That's $250,000 I made in one night. Yeah. <laughs> in one night. <laughs> and then that fool that they're shaking, dog. I swear to God, if you get on my face, I'm going to fucking beat the fuck out of you in front of everybody. Uh, hey, then, can you imagine so, this? He has a suit on, too, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, 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 if I were an audience member, it would be the oddest shit ever. Well, I'd be like, what the fuck is that? Go get shine box. Go <laughs> get <laughs> <laughs> That's so, so, so it's getting heated, dog. Everybody's yeah. there, bro. George Perez is there. Yeah. George Perez is there. Shivago's there. Um, uh, Rizzo is there. Johnny Roque. Everybody's there, bro. Nice. All the pe- when I was there, when, when, after I parked that fool like a bitch, bro, man, that fool was good. He was outside, you know, trying to light a cigarette. Emma Shovago told me that his wife said that, yeah, man, he was having a hard time light his cigarette. Was like, <laughs> <laughs> he was shaking. You know, I know. Dope. And she said, she straight up said, I know this guy's an asshole, but I felt bad for him. <laughs> Dude, that's so funny. So then man. we got punked, right? <laughs> so then I'm thinking, the whole, then I'm thinking, um, I'm glad somebody held me back. Cause think about it, bro. This motherfucking comedian, Felipe Esparza, just won two hundred and fifty thousand yeah. dollars, right? I've been all over the news. Won the fucking <laughs> yeah, last comic right. standing, donated money to a uh, Goodwill, whatever homeboy industry, yeah, and chokes a comedian to death. Do you think that it's was like night. your version of like you, you? You were like, I've got this now. I gotta fuck it up. How do I? Uh, no, you know no, what he's I felt like, motherfucker? I felt. You know what I felt like? After one last comment standing, it changed me, bro. I turned into Bill Murray when in Kingpin at the end. <laughs> so yeah. how do you feel? <laughs> so how do you feel, Mr. McCracken? How do you feel about winning last comment sta- about winning the bowling chair? I feel, I feel above the law. <laughs> Was there any pressure? Was there any pressure? Fuck yeah, there was pressure. I didn't want to lose to a guy with a hook. <laughs> Rob's Mike. That's the best fucking line, dog. Talk about a soul loser. No shit. His hair's all fucked up, dog. He fucking looks at a hot chick. I'm in room 207. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That might have been the funny, dude. That's a funny ass Bill. That's Murray, how I felt yeah. yeah. when I won that comic standing. Dog. I still have that the picture of your face, like, like <laughs> screenshot of that shit when you won. Yeah, it was a, oh, Eddie was yeah, there. I was there. My son thought you were my son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because when he won on the TV, it said Felipe's family. Uh, <laughs> it was me, Lisa, and, his da- and Felipe's funny, daughter. Dude. And I, like, <laughs> <laughs> I just got invited. I was like, shit. Hell yeah, high five, dog. You yeah, were there, man. dog. Merited. <laughs> yeah. It was, dude, when you were there, dog, you, it was sad for Tommy John again. Because um, that fool thought he was going to win, too, right? Yeah. You know, everybody thought something, yeah. you know. I never yeah. thought I was going to win. I thought I was going to move on to success. Either yeah. way, win or lose, I would have won, but it was that I won. Yeah, yeah. So that fool, we're standing there together, right? Last comic standing, we're standing together. And then the whole, uh, everybody, the, they're calling all the votes. They ain't no votes. <clears throat> they're going to announce the winner. Now you're hearing the audience. Felipe, yeah. Felipe, Felipe, <laughs> Felipe, Felipe, Felipe. Uh, Tommy all quiet and shit. Like, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say. People <laughs> actually said, "Can we get a Tommy?" <laughs> yeah, that's so some funny. Asian woman from the front of your lot. Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Thank you." <laughs> <laughs> Fool, you know what it felt like now? Jeb Bush being up there, bro. Oh, yeah. oh damn! Yeah. Please say thanks. Yeah. 
Please clap. Tommy Janaga. I love Please Tommy clap. Janaga. He's awesome, man. Please clap. I forgot that you got it was that was you two, right? Yeah, man. Fuck. When we were on tour, fool, that fool was trying to go over, dog. Like everybody's really? supposed to do twenty minutes. So he trying to pull that rookie shit, dog. Yeah. You know, like dude, like one night he did thirty seven minutes. Damn. And then I had to How go up and do twenty. Twenty. Damn. He did 37 and now Lay was in my hometown, it's even worse. bro. Yeah, yeah bro. <laughs> and and then we're gonna, and like if you're gonna do 37 minutes, make sure you get a standing ovation after. Oh, shit. Yeah. So it wasn't even a standing ovation, bro. And and if you go if you look it up, man, look up last comic standing review of Charlotte, North Carolina. There's a guy who wrote a, a bit, a review about that show, and he writes that he went over it and tried to do 37 minutes. But Felipe Esparza came in like a champ yeah. and got off in 15 with a rocking set. <laughs> <laughs> you know, man, you, you can't out, out, if you ever lose to somebody and you're going to tour with them, you know, don't show a sad face because yeah. no matter what, you know, you're going to always look like a loser, you know, yeah. and Felipe's going to have a raving podcast where you're going to make sure you're going to talk about it. <laughs> This dude, Tommy, would also wait, make us wait 35 minutes for him inside the bus. <laughs> what the fuck? Like, I might have won the show, but he was the diva. Tommy's kind of, Tommy does have his shit together, like, though. Yeah, like, like, yeah, he's but, like working and, on shit. And then, like, and then, I didn't like, know that song. I guess that's so and, then, and then, like, I was like, I was, <laughs> everybody's getting complaining, you know, complaining. It's taking forever. You know, calling whatever, fool, I'm outside finishing that blunt. Yeah. Ah. I'm on the back of the bus smoking a blunt by myself like a soldier Fuck yeah. in Flint, Michigan. That's hilarious. So he was take that, that that would happen. So I'm at the I'm at the sunset room, bro, and this fool I snatched the microphone away from him. He fucking walks away like a little bitch. He ends up driving home, bro. Did you have to do the set after that? Hell yeah, bro. No, it was, part, it was hard to bring the crowd back. <laughs> I, was, dude, I was gonna say, like, so what are you guys up to? <laughs> like, yeah, man. Um, so kind of, I kind of like, um, when I was yelling at him, he goes, "Fuck <laughs> this bitch right here. This guy's a fucking bitch. This guy doesn't like me, you know. This guy trying to get my chick fired from the ice house, you know. He didn't let her work. And a, lot of, a lot of women, single yeah, moms, yeah. are thinking about, yeah, yeah, fuck this guy." <laughs> then the manager walked up to him, bro, and said, "Man, you're gonna have to leave." They made him leave, bro. No way, my yeah. yeah, I'm probably gonna get in trouble just for being on your podcast, man. People were talking. Whenever I tell your name, it's so funny, man. Uh, who did I run into the other day? Alfred, like, Alfred Robles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's Alfred. Was like, "So you have fun on Felipe's podcast?" <laughs> it was one of those. I've known Alfred forever. He's, He's Gabriel cool, Iglesias' man. lobbyist. Yeah. <laughs> hey, now I have a story about Gabriel. You know, uh, Russell and Gabriel did some shows together. A big ass show, right? Big with show Byrne. with Steve Byrne, Lampanelli. I mean, it was great. Damn. And Steve he, Lampanelli. Steve Byrne. Steve Byrne. Steve Lampanelli. <laughs> <laughs> I should get fucked up. Yeah. Maybe I'm saying names right. And I'm missing someone else. Somebody big. Yeah. Fuck, I can't remember. Bill right Burr. Now. No. Jeff Dunham. No. So anyway, everyone had their set time as well, and Russell decided he's going to host it. Obviously, the two big names on that thing were Russell and Gabriel. Yeah. And um, Russell decided to host it, and uh, cool. Gabriel would be the last one up and would go over his time and make all of us wait and do, instead of 30 minutes, there was even one show he did for an hour, after an hour show already. And uh, yeah, we, we won't work with him again. But I mean, I love Gabriel, but... That's that interesting. I never understood that concept in comedy, and maybe yeah. it's just my personality Me type. Too, I, really I just don't want to going be... over, dude. If I, if I, I, I would understand it if it was like, oh, I, I, I'm, I'm fucking killing, it, and I got, yeah. I got, I'm gonna get a standing O, and yeah. this is gonna be awesome. But whenever it's like, yeah, it was already to the minutes, point, you know, where so... you could feel the crowds kind of getting tired already. It's, yeah, dude. It's like two hours of show, and Gabriel's like, who wants to hear my old shit? Dude, and I who, never you know? understood that. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, it's, he does a Felipe. All right, back, right. <laughs> back it. I was like, I'm from Dallas, and at the Addison Improv, there was cats who would come in, and it's just like, oh, so and so's doing like three hours. Oh, you you mean like, hyenas, right? You mean hyenas? <laughs> That's funny. Um, yeah, <laughs> you're right. Damn. Look, improv. Hook me up, man. I'm your home boy. You're not even booking me. Yo, but so it was five shows that we did it's with him. Jeff, bro, it's Jeff. After two shows. <laughs> after peaches. Hey, after two shows, we told we uh, we went to Gabriel's uh, people and like, yo, what's up with him going over, man? Like, and he still didn't. He still went over. 
after we talked to his managers and we're like, you know, can, can you tell him not go over? We got Lampinelli yeah. and Russell and Burn waiting. He's got a reputation. He always goes over there, right? Yeah. Like, but if it's your show, that's fine. Do whatever you want. But, but something like this, yeah, whenever it's yeah. like other comics. This was called the the something majority tour, and it was Russell and Gabriel's thing. So Interesting. But there was another comic, though. There was another comic. I can't remember right now. Damn. Roy Wood Jr., man, I got him in trouble one time, I think. Roy Wood Jr.? Whenever I first started, whenever I moved to New York, I got my agent, and he hooked me up with a college gig to open for Roy, Roy and he was like, man, you got to tell these agents, like, what to do, man. You got to get on there. Like, he, he gave me that. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I called my, I remember I called my agent, and I was like, hey, man, um, I was talking to Roy Wood Jr., and he told me I need to be doing this. He's like, dude, don't fucking listen to him. Don't, if, if, are you fucking serious? Like it was like one of those like he hated it. It's so funny because it's someone he's not even with now. I'm pretty sure he's not with him, but it's like, oh man, those those guys write comedy, man. Tommy Johnigan and Roy Woods Jr. Because we were going to places where those fools never ventured to, bro. On the last comic standing tour, like those places where we went to, where I was surprised I had fans. Like Pennsylvania, we were in um, Allentown, and in the front row, bro. I looked down when I went up on stage. And I saw it was a fucking four meat, um, old motherfucker, bro, white motherfuckers. Yeah. And two of them had fucking vote for Felipe shirts on oh. that they made. Nice. And yes. I said, yeah, motherfucker, you could go over, bro, but I won the crowd. <laughs> so, yeah, man. So, what happened, bro? What time you finally make it home? <laughs> finally made it. Oh, and here's the uh, man. My Tell me you ate something broke to up fuck with me. <laughs> Tell me you ate something to fuck up your body more. I ate nothing. Oh, fuck. I, ate. I ate no food you know yesterday. You know? Lisa, no food, bro. Lisa, Eddie, you know what this motherfucker? I tell you what, all he ate a big fucking bite of my jackfruit burrito. That's right. That was so good, bro. I remember thinking like, ah, oh, sustenance. <laughs> like, oh. This is so, dude. I did have a big ass like. <laughs> This I don't even know if I, I asked you for I it. I didn't even know I said, here, have a bite. I didn't give a fuck, right? But this fool took a bite. Like, it was, you, 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 you took one of those bites, you yeah. let your little brother bite. Yeah. Like, like, this, oh, like, yeah. Um, like one of those bites, and you know what? I'm never going to give my little brother a bite of my burrito. No <laughs> I deep-throated that burrito. It was, it was a big good, bite, huh? yeah. So what ended up happening that night? Was your, you didn't eat? No, so I went back, and by, my girlfriend was pissing me all day because I went... You know how like I'm still in that mode like you don't know. Or you took a long a long day the, like. Well, the girlfriend is a new thing to comedy, so I'm not sure like when I should. How long have you her. been with her? Huh? How long have you been with her? Like two years. Do you live together? Yeah, but I'm very like I'm like okay, should we go out? Am I gonna be that guy with a girlfriend now all the time that goes out? And it, a lot of shit just gets in my head, you know. <laughs> you think about these things because you're like, yeah. oh, are, are they wanting it as just, you should? Are they wanting <laughs> it just to be a dude's thing? And yeah. I'm gonna be the guy showing up with a girlfriend, you're and then I got. Then you start thinking about man. The fuck am I gonna be together? Bring the fucking chick to the comedy to the comedy store to yeah, the improv. Man. Then we break up. Then I see this bitch somebody else in my house. <laughs> Dude, I've had a oh bro, I got a crazy ex that's trying to get in this business so bad, man. I hate that shit. Oh, it's insane. I know one time I was, I was fucking we we're talking about this, you know, with my wife. Then my wife um I don't know where bro busted a notepad and goes, Yeah, flip, I've been working on this ten minutes set right now. Dude. I fucking died, dog. Yes. I fucking died. <laughs> and I'm fucking hard to die, My ex started. No, up. no, she busted a fucking notepad never seen oh, before. Oh shit. And stickers. <laughs> That's funny. My and a sticker of Lucy K jerking off. <laughs> My ex started a podcast here. Shut and up! He's a relationship oh, coach, which is so God. weird. It's called, it's, it's called Dust in the Wind. Dude, she fucking talks so much <laughs> shit. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, um, you know what's, bro, you know what's funny about last night? Dust in the Wind. <laughs> <laughs> she was trying to get all my best friends to do the podcast. Oh, no one did it except fuck. except for Nick. And of I course. last night I saw him and I was like, dude, man, you know, you really like that. Why did you do that? And he was like, oh, he didn't ask you first or anything. No, because I, I we were like, it's it's a weird thing. Like we're like friends. Huh. We started out together. We're like best friends. But Yo, we're we, living we, like, together. Fall out. Yeah, we live together. Nick like, Geta? Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, so anyway, he was like, I was like, dude, why did you do that, man? You knew that it would, it, you, your ex-girlfriend you know wanted to come to a fucking oh, show. Shit. Your ex-girlfriend wanted to come to a show, and I was like, no, nah, that'd be kind of weird, because it'd be, you know, you, you and Nick. And so I was like, why'd you do that? And he was like, 
I don't know, man. I, he, he was really heartfelt and apologized. Yeah. And I was like, man, that's pretty nice. But he didn't talk shit about you on it, did he? He did. They did. <laughs> really? Yeah, they talked bad. Yeah, they didn't mention my name, but it was like obvious that you guys are talking about me. And I couldn't under, I was oh. like, I was like, bro, that fucking hurt, man. Yeah. You're like, you're my best friend. And I, I would never yeah. think to do that. So you guys obviously were not on good terms at that time. No, but now it's been cool lately. I know, like, at that right, time. At you that, said you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, at that time. Yeah, that time. Um, yeah, but we're. I guess we're cool now. It's weird though, because you know that it's not the same. It's not the same, yeah. and I hate it. And I'm like, I'm one of those guys. I just want everyone to get along, and want to have friends. And I'm like, but there is. Uh, it's like, ah, uh, what are we? You know, I'm yeah. just like, yeah, fuck it. fucking dust in the wind podcast over there. <laughs> I know, bro. You, she's gonna ask you next. For your case, you're <laughs> That's be on it. Next week. <laughs> oh yeah, this fucking getting fucked up all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I hate when that shit happens, bro. It happens, bro. Like, fool, I was dating some chick, bro, at one time. She was a waitress at the fucking um, Montebello at Gotham's. And, like, in a, and then um, she had a twin sister. But I never knew which twin, whatever, right? But one time, we ended up dating. She ended up being my girlfriend. But it was kind of fucked up, you know, because she was a twin. And um, they, they asked me... Um, I ask, you know, like a typical dude, you know, responds, right? Felipe, I think the twin one likes you. And he goes, which one? The one with the fatter ass? <laughs> so right away, she's a fatter ass twin. The fatter ass, <laughs> the fatter ass. So fool. Fatter ass. So later on, <laughs> me, I stopped dating this chick, right? I broke her heart, ended up cheating on her, you know, the usual, you know. Yeah, the yeah. usual. <laughs> it was sad, you know. Smack the microphone a, out a, of her hand. With a fucked up one, you know. It was one of those, I got caught cheating because, um, for those, it was old school, man. It was before cell phones. <laughs> it was before being a, being a, this is a fucking rookie mistake. Um, I was checking my voicemail from her house. So, when oh, I checked the voicemail, shit. right? Oh, I was checking, and there's a bunch of different chicks for calling in, checking their avails for the weekend, you know? <laughs> 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 what you want, fat ass? I might be able to get you a 9 p.m. spot. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, they will call you in their avails, and I'll call them up, call them back. Yeah, man, we, we, we could, um, we have a we have an open set for 10 o'clock tonight, you know? A little uh, Felipe, um, v VHS and chill. Uh, anyways, <laughs> the so I didn't hang up the phone right. <laughs> Fool. I didn't hang up oh, the phone right. The right. Her fucking twin sister was on the other line, picked up the phone, I guess, immediately after I hung up. No. Um, and she fucking, of course, she started listening, dog. Damn. And she went through all everything. Oh my, uh, and then she goes, Oh my God, sis. Oh. My <laughs> God. Oh my God, sis. <laughs> so. Fool, they must have fucking went through everything fast, dog. Yeah. They must have listened to that from her house to the gas station. It was like a five-minute drive left in that. Because by the time I went over there, bro, I went to the gas station, and I put in gas, and I was coming out of the bathroom, you know, you know, watching my face, you know, getting ready for my next day probably. <laughs> or, or whatever I was doing, bro. I was taking a big-ass shit. At yeah. the gas station. I was trying to leave. <laughs> yeah. Her house was, you get ready. Her house was perfect, bro. I would leave her house, go to the gas station, finally take a, take a fucking good ass shit that I wanted to take to her house. So she, when she came out of the house, when she when I come out of the bathroom, she goes, what the? She didn't say what the fuck. She just said, whatever, you know, you cheat on me. I hate She was already busted. heartbroken. <laughs> um, she fucking got at me at the gas station. I said, I said, I'm sorry, all right, whatever. You asshole, just leave me here. Whatever, right? Uh, so I come up in the car and take off. We broke up. That so sucks, it's man. sad. You it's know how fucking... I got I got busted because I put... I, there's this, it's the same fucking ex. That's probably why she hates me. Um, <laughs> but I had this... The chief on the Dust in the Wind podcast. Yeah, there, <laughs> Dust in the Wind podcast. <laughs> I saved this girl that I met She's in Austin. Notes. That's... I, I put her name as my brother's name, Jared. And she, I got Fuck a text message idiot. from Jared. <laughs> Here's what got me, too. Because oh you know how on the God. iPhone there's a dot, dot, dot? And she knew my brother didn't have an iPhone. She's like, did Jared get an iPhone? And I'm like, uh, uh, uh. Oh, what what the fuck? <laughs> I just straight up was like, you got me. And I'm sorry. <laughs> and you got me. Uh, Jared from Subway, huh? Yeah, you can say it was oh, another yeah. Jared. I, I should have been. Yeah. Why does Jared want to lick your nuts? Okay, <laughs> I don't, my brother's very, uh, we have a close family. <laughs> so fool. This chick, right? I, I never thought this chick was trying to get me back, right? You know, you never think that from a chick, right? So yeah, same, dude, I learned that. They fucking, bro. So she, just like you, bro, right? So this bitch, right? I guess she like comedy, right? This bitch started talking with Edwin San Juan. Oh, shit. But behind my back, I didn't know, right? So Edwin yeah. San Juan told me. Yeah. 
And I say, well, fuck it. At least he told me, right? Yeah, yeah. But I don't know what's going on, right? So, fuck, dude. Um, Ernie G, this fucking hat comedian, bro. <laughs> It's fucking over there being a perv, trying to date, date, trying to be with me behind my back, and talking shit about me too, though. Uh, well, I heard, if I was you, if um, so you're getting back with him, right? So really, cause I just finished seeing him with this other chick, recently. What? what so, so when this chick didn't want to tell me who told all the information, yeah. I felt that, you know, I can't trust her, you know, even though I cheated her a bunch of times. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as it comes back, it's like, yeah. well, it's not right. I said, like, this is right. You're so not right. That's how, I, that's how I was in my maturity of a man. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. So I'm, I'm more pissed. Now, I, instead of being still, like, sad that this chick cried through a whole movie, you know, <laughs> so every <laughs> Because of me, uh, <laughs> trying to make things work, <laughs> missed yeah. three days of work, never said I was sorry. I'm mad because she's holding back on telling me who told her that. That's funny, dude. Ernie G. Ernie G. So Sounds whatever. Familiar. So yeah, whatever, man. You know what sucks? I'm pretty sure that, that last girl, the psycho one, like, yeah, I was a bad boyfriend with her just because I had You're a bad like boy, bro. Real... You got the bad boy look, bro. You're I'm like, a, but yeah. now, but my, You're my like girlfriend, Sam Kinison, bro. dude, my girlfriend now, though, we're like, I'm such a good boyfriend. I'm almost too good. Like, I'll like, fu- I, I do everything. I'm you know? almost too good. And that's, bro, just because I'm like, good, bro, it's like I'm doing things that I'm supposed to be doing, but now I want, <laughs> I want acknowledgement for it. <laughs> yeah, right? Dude, I'm like, I want man. props. And I, I tell her sometimes, I'm like, you have no idea. Dude, yeah. If you, oh, man, what, man, I used to be bad. Uh, you, <laughs> I, I think is you never knew you were so thoughtful, right? <laughs> well, that, I'm just like, well, after that one, I was like, you know what? I should probably be a good guy. <laughs> and I she wanna, deserves it. I know, but I'm like, ah, oh, you don't even know how bad I was, lady. So yeah. what happened to, what, what happened when you came in last night? You came in fucking oh, screaming, I was just leaving. Yeah, so I, I came in and she said, I don't remember last night, she said that I, she said that I, I was just walking into things, and she said that she saw my Uber and jumped in bed because she didn't. She was so pissed. She was like, "I don't even." Oh, uh, she saw your Uber. So she, yeah, she saw oh. I was coming. Was like, "Ah, oh, I'm jumping in bed." Um, so this morning though, oh my god, bro! Oh, I got it so bad. Oh shit! I got it so fucking bad. Just like, and and I was hungover, and I was getting yelled at, and like, oh, I was just, I put the T-shirt over my head, and I was like, "I'm, I'm sorry, babe. I'm sorry." Oh, just because he came home drunk. And because I, well, I was supposed to text her after Bing Gleebs. It was like one of those situations. Oh. I was like, are, are girls cool? To, like, is everyone bringing their girlfriends? And then, like, it turns out it was like a bunch of people showed up. So I was like, but when I told her before, I was like, babe, just I, 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 come. And she's like, no, I don't want to. And I'm like, so I figured yeah. she'd be cool, but <laughs> no, oh, yeah. That's... Yeah, so she was really pissed at me. And I don't know. Luckily, uh, I turned on the dusty charm this morning. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Charm. Turned on the dusty, <laughs> dust in a bar charm. And uh, I think I got her. <laughs> That's what reeled her in the, fir- the first time, right? I love it, too, man. I fucking love. I love whenever you're in trouble and yeah. then you're like, it's working. Like, yeah, like she's not mad at me as much anymore. A lot of, a lot of female listeners, bro. What, what is the dusty charm, bro? Yeah, oh, yeah. Take a shower it? or what? It's like a. T- <laughs> I don't know. Put away the bottles you left uh, behind. He curls no, his hair a bit I just, more. I'll have a moment of dramatic, like, uh, like. Uh, I, what have I become? Bro, did you know? you throw, <laughs> bro, did you, did you, have you thrown in the I need to have a dad line? Uh, so every I night. Uh, dude, uh, I, the thing is, I was raised Jehovah's Witness too, so I didn't oh, have birthdays or fuck, Christmases. Bro. So I'm like, come on. You, you baby, have, I didn't know Christmas. You must have good feet. <laughs> you must have good feet. <laughs> so yeah, you must dude. have good feet. And knocking hands, bro. Knock somebody out, dog. <laughs> That's a- so that's why you needed me there last night, bro. You needed a witness. I did. <laughs> Yo, that's a good one now. Since you were Jehovah's Witness, you've never celebrated a birthday or nothing. Yeah, I know, man. The first thing I've ever celebrated is our anniversary. Oh, I got to <laughs> use that. It's going in the pamphlet. Yeah, it's going man. in the notebook. <laughs> that, man, that's the perfect guy right there, man. Jehovah's Witness and a dude. You didn't give me shit for Valentine's Day. And every time you give somebody But wait, can't you guys you have like five wives? <laughs> no, you're like mixing up like seven rel- I like how every other religion that's not the main one gets pushed in there. All right, you guys. Like, and then that little like, you guys are fucking weird. <laughs> you probably have seven Are you wives. still Jehovah's Witness? Um, I Mormon go to church sometimes. Wives. Mormon. Yeah, yeah, Mormon. I go to church sometimes. Yeah. If I'm feeling really bad. Do you celebrate <laughs> your birthday? No. 
Oh. I've never celebrated my birthday. Do you tell anyone when your birthday Every is? Every day's nah. a party, bro. <laughs> nah, I. Every day's the party. Do you know party, how old bro. you are? <laughs> Dude, you know what's funny? I thought 37. today. What is today? Tuesday. What's the date? Day? Wednesday. July 13th. Okay, my birthday's July 19th. I was like, is my birthday today? <laughs> like, I couldn't because I just don't pay attention and shit. That'd be cool, man. You, you, you get away with a lot of shit, man. Like, if you buy something nice for somebody on Valentine's Day, you know, I don't fucking really celebrate Valentine's Day ever. But Dude, I'm giving you something. Yes, and that's what sucks, too, in these relationships because I'm like, man, I've never had it been obligated to buy someone a gift. It feels weird, like, oh, now I have to buy you a gift. It's not coming from my heart. It's just because this is the calendar, so I got to fucking buy you a gift. Yeah. I don't know. She's, that's that's she, when it's awesome to have that religion. You're like, sorry. Huh? Yeah. Fucking, fucking Jehovah. Oh, fool. And, oh, dude. <laughs> getting back to the fucking, um, your chick starting a podcast and our chick starting to do stand-up comedy. One time we were all hanging out and, um, and then my chick said, maybe I should be a comedian. And then I said, why? You're not even fucking funny. <laughs> that is what planted the seed that's going to make her Chris. And oh. that's the Felipe charm. But then, not Lisa. She's funny, you know. But some other chick. The same chick, right? And uh, then I said, but, but why? You're not even fucking funny. And she got all butthurt, right? And then I told all my friends about that shit, and they all died. <laughs> and then I was so then, bro, I was, I was talking about something, and you guys want to hear something funny? And then this stu stupid idiot said, Right in front of my chick. I know Lee, I know, what's the name didn't say it? Oh, my God. oh what, the, the, the girl? The girl. The twin? He said her name. I know she didn't say it because I know she ain't funny. <laughs> and then he laughed. Yeah, even shoot her down even more right what there. What idiot, dog. <laughs> but she was funny in that motherfucker, though. That's funny, man. Dude, that motherfucker sucked at comedy, bro. I won't say his name, bro. He brought a chick to the show. Not Ernie G? No, he bombed so hard. The chick told him in front of everybody, maybe it's not for you. Damn, uh, dude, that's a worst. You ever see an unfunny? Oh, comic if you apologize for out, for them, I dude, saw some last night, bro. At the improv, bro, when an unfunny comic brings a girl out and it's like, bro, why would you? She better that? not be hot. <laughs> You're showing her your worst quality. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, why would you do that? It's a good one, bro. You're right about that. Yeah. It's so true, man. It's like, why would you do that? You're, you're showing her you're unfunny. Sure, you're on stage, but she's gonna watch you bomb. She, do you think she wants to fuck you after that? <laughs> I know, man. Start feeling sorry for you. Maybe a yeah, sympathy. That, that's when it's bad when you start when you start apologizing for your friend up on stage. Like, damn, sorry, I don't know what's going on. He <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> doesn't bomb this bad, especially <laughs> if you invite twenty employees from your job. <laughs> oh, dude. you fucking suck. That makes shit awkward. Yeah, if you're not getting, if you're not killing with twenty of your friends, man. Because <laughs> like... you don't want to be funny at work, you should say that for the stage. Hey, I've had I, that's happened where I've invited coworkers to a show. And then a comedy come a comedian comes up and is like, oh, he's funny. And then he wasn't. I was like, shit, my bad. <laughs> oh, yeah. That would have been me last night. <laughs> we all came out to see you. Doesn't want to go. Yeah. Howie Mandel was there. That's what do you remember that? I heard that he was there, but yeah. I, I wonder if that's why I got kicked off too, because they were like, All right, we're gonna have an air of professionalism. Get this fucking <laughs> drunkard out of here. He went up for the first show. And you were there for the All Star show or the Hope and Mike show? That's Russell's next show. In I was there for the way. ten o'clock or yeah. with Howie the and uh, with Howie at uh, JFL. He's gonna do his um, whatever they call those things on his gala at JFL. You're not doing it this year or anything like What's that. What's JFL? The Just for Laughs. Oh no, no, I'm not doing it. Did you ask me <laughs> if I was doing the Open Mic show? No. <laughs> um, no, you were doing a show from from somebody else had a show right on Sat on Tuesday night, the college show, right? Oh yeah, it was one of those like oh. yeah yeah I think. It was so like, what's up? What's the hardest job of being a personal assistant besides driving the Bentley from LA? <laughs> besides driving the Bentley from Los Angeles? I should have came in one of his cars. Up in the Bentley and then driving back. <laughs> oh, looking forward to seeing you last week, bro. I would be real. Yeah, with you. that's dope, man. I that, and that's that's one of the times where I got to drive Russell's Impala to I pick see. you up to go to Be Real's. Uh, podcast and the shit broke down in front of my house what? in front of his That's house so funny oh my god badass 64 impala man <laughs> badass 64 impala. yeah <laughs> that shit didn't work <laughs> oh yeah i was getting towed huh yeah people pass by nice car doesn't work <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, the, hard, the hardest the hardest thing is that my life revolves around him right now it's a little different thing too i um i live with him Shit, it's like Lisa, right? <laughs> but you know what? I mean, it's tough, right? Because um, you gotta like, 
you gotta like know this person's. You gotta. It's not just booking a plane now. Like anybody can book a plane for a, yeah. a different type of people. But when you know the person, you gotta know exactly like what seat because you know the personality. Yeah, now. and I'm on top of it for most of the time. But but it's a little shit that bothers them. Like if there's no bread in the house. Like what the fuck? There's no bread. Oh, that's. I was like, fire. shit. I didn't check the cabinet. My bad. <laughs> it's uh, we're low on peanut butter. Like, oh, it's, you forget it's tennis thing. shoes. But you know what? That's a good thing. If that's the if that's the shit I'm fucking up on, as long as it's not nothing huge, right? Like forgetting you, a book of flight, and he's at the airport, and he's like, what the fuck? You ever forget to do something uh, important though? Uh, no, I don't think so, man. You just got to be really organized. But it's it's just time consuming. That's the main thing. I would feel so sorry. If I, I even know had... Ivan. Gave yeah. Vanessa, yeah. Um, is he still with him? I think he is. Yeah, yeah. His biggest thing that, ever, that he did when I was there, Gabriel yeah. recording his one hour over and over, uh -huh. and Gabriel left the tapes. Oh no, Ivan left a little disc behind. The whole oh, time. oh, damn! Oh, that's God. big. Did he get in trouble? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> big. You sucks, man. should see him on a. He was on the phone like two hours trying to get the hotel room trying to get the tapes trying to get oh, trying to get some a hoochie to go over there and ask trying to get anybody you know i only almost got fired once and it was over a girl like a fucking groupie where you know he was fucking around with her, you this, was, her. this was like the first year i was with him and um he's like don't fuck with this girl she's fucking crazy and uh of course i invite her over to the house you fucked her. and he took mm. pictures she took pictures of of his cars and of the house put it all over her facebook and he, he checks my Facebook, and he's like, what the fuck? And this was like two days before going to Asia. And he's like, don't fucking come to Asia. Get your shit out of the house. I don't want to see you again. His brother calls me the next day. He's like, it's too late for you not to come to Asia. But uh, he's going uh, <laughs> to... You have to come, but he's going to downgrade you to the economy. He, you know, he, flies us, he flies us first class you, everywhere we go. Dope. Oh my but God. since it was last minute, it was a middle seat, 13-hour flight. Oh. And... Uh, yeah, it was really awkward when I saw him. You know, I had to apologize, and that was a yeah. fuck up. But hey, it was a fuck up over a fucking groupie, like a girl that I tried fucking around with after, and uh, that's what got me in trouble. But that's the the one time that I almost got fired. It's, it's weird, like when you hang out with Russell, like he bought me three watches. Yeah, I lost one at um at the club at the Ventura Comedy Club, bro. I was gonna go take a shit. He <laughs> came back, watch is gone. Damn, Damn dude. Yeah. So, um, like from the green room or never, green room. Damn, damn, I've never gotten that opener experience. You know what I'm saying? Where I've never the closest I got, I opened for Mencia for like a few weeks. Okay. And that's the closest I got to like where you, you know how you hear the stories like, oh, they buy, people buy yeah. watching this shit. Russell's a very generous guy, Ooh. man. Very generous. You know what's dope is even before working for him, I never heard people say bad things about him. He's one yeah, of those I've never comics heard that, bad. Yeah, yeah, he's one of those comics that takes care of everyone, pays the openers more than most comics, and he's just a really generous guy. Takes care of all his people, so it's he's so dope. nice. So who is he roofing? No, <laughs> <laughs> right? And you know what? And he's one of the few comics that that has never been on drugs. He didn't drink his first alcoholic beverage until he was 31 years old. That's interesting. So. You know, I, that thing, I didn't remember when I first started working with him. My mom was scared, thinking I was going to get into the his entertainment. Story, his story started like this. I remember everything that happened. <laughs> yeah, he's got a great memory. <laughs> I was um, he, I went to a store with him in uh, Toronto, right, at the mall, and they were following this motherfucker, like TMZ. Like, um, they were following him, bro, like a bunch of people. He had to, he had to put a hat on and hide. So we went to the wow. store, bro. And I'm checking out these boots, right? The store is called David's. I never heard of fucking David's. <laughs> and um, he's buying boots. And um, he goes, hey, Felipe, you like those boots, fool? Yeah, they're all right. You know, I, I did like them. They're all right. He goes, you want them? And I said, no, nah, I'm good, man. And I saw, I saw the price. Yeah. $1,300. <laughs> Damn. And I said, they're $1,300. Well, I'm good, bro. I can't pull this off. Yeah. <laughs> if I tell somebody somebody bought them for me, they're gonna say what twenty hundred dollars? They're gonna believe that shit. <laughs> now if I tell them I stole them <laughs> and they're worth two hundred, I could get away with that. <laughs> That's awesome. Nobody two thirteen hundred dollar boots, Dusty. You need Dude, that bro? I was thinking that I'm like that would be the only thing on my person that's worth anything. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I got a shitty t shirt on with nice boots. <laughs> Dust in the Wind podcast. What you want, fat ass? What you want, fat ass? People like that, bro. They did, bro. They they give you a shout out. Yeah, yeah. Say, Hello. Bring Dustin back. We did. Man. Nice. What you want, fat ass? Hey, how many? How many shows is this for you with three? Uh, it's like three. Yeah. Oh, man. number three. Yeah, yeah but we're, we're also working on a pilot, so for a sitcom. That's actually which is weird. That's how we mostly met. Yeah. Okay. That. Yeah. So, how's that going? 
good. I'm good. Plus, I ran into him when he was clean cut when he first got here. When I was a good boy. <laughs> well, where are you, where are you <laughs> from? Are you from Texas? From Dallas? Dallas, but uh-huh. I moved here from New York. I moved from Dallas to New York to uh, here. I'm tough. Yeah. Yeah, man. So what you got going on next, bro? Where you gonna keep? Yeah, we're chilling most of the summer. Russell's working on a movie right now. So In New I, Orleans. So I got the house to myself. You gonna the be there Tuesday? Oh, man. Do you got next a pool? Tuesday? Let me come over. Got a pool, man. <laughs> got a you pool. You gonna be there next Tuesday? Yeah, come by. I might go bodyboarding. Let's by your do house. it, man. Yeah. yeah. So I got I got the house to myself. Bring Isaac Hayes. He'll, he'll have those summer free that day. Yeah, he yeah. can go swimming at the house, man. Yeah, we bring got Isaac. He'll have fun. Yeah. We'll make some vegan burgers, bro. Bring it. bring your bunny. Yeah, I, I've known. I knew you since you were a carnivore. <laughs> since you were a carnivore, <laughs> I don't think. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll bring it. We'll do some. We'll, I'll tell Rodrigo to come. Yeah, you should come too if you mind. Yeah, you go. Bring whoever. Yeah, I'll bring my girlfriend. Russell says bring whoever. Bring your girlfriend. What if I say good. it's a dude thing? No, no, no. she'd be so. Big. Bring. I'll bring a torta too. So. <laughs> yeah, man, we'll make some vegan tacos where you can fucking take a big ass bite again. Yeah, Lisa, yeah. I want to try some of your vegan cooking well, for sure. Yeah. We'll do it. I want to try that ceviche. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Ooh, ceviche. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully, uh, we're gonna we're thinking of taking a break from the What's Up Food podcast. But Why? What I'm Why? Thinking, what I'm doing is um, yeah. hopefully <laughs> record three podcasts in one day. Oh, there you go. And then brrr, be gone for three weeks. We have a scheduling issue next week. We have a scheduling issue uh, next week. Maybe the next week. Good next problem week. to have. It might be off for two weeks. Might be off for two weeks, people. Damn. Oh, What's God. Up <laughs> Food? Thank you very much to our 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 guest yeah. Eddie. Chilling pleasure, here, man. pleasure and honor. Thank you, really, man. Hell yeah, man. I've Eddie been a Valdez. fan since day since I can remember. So, this Ezra, is awesome. thanks for hooking up that checking account. Still yeah, having. man. Dustin Ibarra, Felipe. you have a lot of apologizing to do tomorrow. <laughs> no, hey, I got done with my apologizing early. All right, the next step is uh, let's start talking shit. But yeah, then I, gotta, I gotta find a comic that I just hate and just yeah. start some shit with this motherfucker. Yeah. Bring back the past with Nick, man, about the fucking Dust in the Wind uh, podcast. I should, I should be like, <laughs> listen, I know you said sorry, but I'm, I yeah, gotta, but bro, I gotta I'm not mad. done with this. I know, you, I know you said sorry, <laughs> but you're trying to fuck with me. Uh, and, and now I'm words. gonna fuck with you. <laughs> fuck yeah, I'll put gum in your hair. Oh, I'm gonna <laughs> <from> everything. <laughs> Whoa, so fool! <laughs> Go snatch the mic off his hand on stage.